Going to get crunk. Yeah. Yeah. Head back to Longview, Kelly popping trunk. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. Yeah. Riding and I'm sipping. Yeah. Let me come through four foes that are tipping. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. Yeah. Watch the trunk crack. Yeah. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, see me running back. Yeah. Maybe AP, yeah. maybe AD. Yeah. I ain't even tripping because we some athletes. Yeah. Messing with Smitty yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. He get pissed if we don't make our time. Yeah. But we gonna get it because we gotta finish. Yeah. Nebraska horn hustles, man, we diminish. Yeah. Yeah. Little. I ain't like a skittle. Yeah. I ain't even tripping. I ain't never double dribble. Yeah. Cause I'm a player from the Himalaya. Yeah. Let me sit sideways, man. Maybe back door. Yeah. Maybe fall off. Yeah. Sipping codeine cause I gotta kill the cow. Yeah. Let me sit sideways in the big bins. Oh, you boys, they my brothers, they my friends. All right, welcome into Fullback U. Uh, me and my brother Brad Reed uh, made a trip up to Tulsa to see our new brother Travis Dav- Davidson uh, here at Trace Bar and Grill here in Tulsa. Travis, how you feeling? Oh. I'm feeling fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Before we get into everything started, Brad, are you a battle rap fan? Uh, yeah, for sure. Are you really? Okay, yeah, well, really. This is what caught me and Travis's eye initially on Twitter. He, uh, we met on there, so I want to ask you first before we start talking about this beautiful bar and grill. Top five battlers in the game right now. In the game right now, he, he goes to all the battles. Yikes. So this is the guy to know for battle okay, rap. Okay, so. for sure. I uh, ooh, right now, um, you got to have Rum Nitty's been on fire. Um, uh, John John to Don, it's interesting ever since these guys on league going now, bullpen battle league in uh, Atlanta. Um, I'd have to put him in there. I'm doing no particular order. Rum Nitty, okay. John John, uh, you got to put Lux in there. Um, Iron Solomon, I'll never leave out of any. Until he dies, he will not be out of any top five of mine because right. he's the GOAT in my opinion. Um, and then Disaster. Okay. Nobody's... Nobody wants to go out west. And Brad, you got any battle thoughts? Oh man, no, I don't. I, I wouldn't have enough. Uh, I would have probably looked them up beforehand and made a good presentation for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but off the top of my head, that's the no, production in there no, for you, right there. I just, I just enjoy. Okay, enjoy. So, segueing into the next segment, um, you know, again, thank you for letting us have it here. Beautiful spot. We hey. got the Chiefs about to play. Very happy to have you. It's a um, cool environment for it. Awesome deal, but. Uh, and I, I know it's an OU football podcast, but I got to start this shit off. I, I broke Twitter again the other day. <laughs> oh, um, it's either me, Sanchez, or Buzzy. It's either me, Sanchez, or Curtis Bolton. But before we even get out, get into it, I, I it's interesting, Brad. We, we talk about these things on the podcast, and then they happen. Yeah, for um, sure. I think it's funny. I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I think it's funny how you know people are okay with us, and people can joke about our job, and, and it's not okay when we joke about their job. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think, too, is some of it I feel like is a, a little bit of a jealousy there. I mean, and, and, and a lot of those people are in a job that's it's shrinking. Uh, you know, layoffs. Former players are taking some jobs, yeah, but exactly. they're not taking and coaching so they're, jobs. They're jealous of that, Hey, I you can go like. take a coaching job any day you want. You can tell me football. How about that one? Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have to tell, ask about the transfer. <laughs> you wouldn't have to call me and get my number or get uh, the, my teammates' numbers. Right. Everything right. was all good when you were on my podcast, and nobody said anything about communication or journalism. Or, oh, J.D., you're the best. Oh, my God, I enjoyed your podcast so much. I have the text messages. Yeah. But yeah. now it's time to be sarcastic on Twitter. Right. If anything, I thought respectable journalism. We got somebody admiring the pod. I love yeah, it. Admire the highs. Absolutely, Heisman. Jason White. Yes, um, it's amazing the lack of professionalism by True. thirty-year journalists. Uh, you're right. Lack of professionalism. Well, I, I, I like, I like the uh, the Leach conversation. Right? They're like, well, Mike Leach didn't play football, but he's one of the greatest football minds in the last twenty years, or most respected um, in in a lot of circles. Well, he didn't. He wasn't a journalist for 30 years and then got hired. Right. Like, he yeah. studied. And, and I'm a football fan. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm neither player nor journalist. So I, I, I don't have a dog in the fight per se. But I also realize that, like, it's not my job <laughs> to learn this stuff. Like, people come up to me and they're, they're not going to say, um, I'd like – a uh, cheeseburger and for you to break down the air raid offense for me. <laughs> like, nobody's going to say that to right. me. Like, so people who are going to be asked that are obviously going to have a different motivation to learn it, study it, everything like that, and will have the proper channels because if you just wanted to go to your local library and learn about football, it's not the same as being brought in as a player at an elite university yep. and being taught by guys like Kevin Sumlin and these guys. Like, you just... 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go, Brad, after it. But I, yeah. I wanted to say, man, and he's totally right. The Leach situation, I never said that you have to play, okay? What I said is there is a different level of knowledge in this game past high school. Right. When I, let, when I graduated high school from a coach who was in the Oklahoma State high, Hall of Fame, or Oklahoma High School Coaches Hall of Fame, I learned what a 7, 6, and 9 was. A, a guy, a tight end, was going to line up. A DN was going to line up inside, head up, or outside of me. They're probably going to be an inside, uh, outside backer blitz. I may go downfield blocking linebacker safety. That was it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When Kevin Tumlin and, J and Jonathan Hayes sat me down and they said, J.D., we need to talk to you about ISO on a possible pirate and cat blitz. Right. I did not know what they were talking about. Yeah. They said, hey, that three and five may just be shaded down a little bit tight. The linebacker may be on his toes. You got to focus on that corner's eyes first because if he comes off, that tackle may not be able to get there. You got to get him first. You got to focus on that safety in case they go to the boundary, in case that wide receiver, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I don't hear journalists who study the game, who have a platform, talking about these things. Lastly, you either have a point to empower players, you have a platform to empower players, or to devalue us. And you will not knock our knowledge down. And Because, again, you get all in your damn feelings when I say when I make one joke. I'm a 30-year journalist, and I know this, and I know that. And you begged me to get on the All-State team. Right. Okay? Right. Talk about a low blow. Professional journalists take low blow? Yeah. Yeah. You, you take a low blow as a professional journal and then delete the tweet. Right. That's what you do. Well, never in, delete. In my opinion, delete the tweet though. Never, but I got you. Never fam. delete. I got any you, tweet. fam. You didn't delete it on me. <laughs> yeah. You didn't delete it on me. I, I I don't know. I don't care the worst take I have ever had. I've never. I don't. I don't think I've ever. I prob probably deleted a tweet because they don't have an edit button. I deleted I one. I told a guy his his baby looked on. He looked so unathletic. He should be careful to hold his baby. Okay. You okay. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Shit happens. Okay. But I deleted a tweet <laughs> just because I was like, I just don't even want to have this argument with this person. I just yeah. don't want to even go down there. Yeah. Uh, but so you know, I think what we're talking about a little bit is credibility. You know, if if they can analyze the game and they've been close to the game for a long time, but from a distance, not yeah. in the game like JD. I couldn't, you know, as long as I've worked in sports radio or on the you know fringe of in in that kind of thing in radio. I couldn't tell you any of the stuff that JD <laughs> could well, tell you. you. And I appreciate that. And again, I mean, that's part and of And I'm not even as Gruden accomplished as right. some of those guys. Right. But, but that, that's what it comes across. And, and again, I mean, for me, it shows me who they are. Mm -hmm. Because again, this was a tweet that I was refer I, I hit up Chisholm, who I've done a, a podcast with. I like Chisholm. Mm -hmm. I didn't tag any of those other three media guys that came and found my tweet. Mm -hmm. Why you got to come and find my tweet? I wasn't talking about you. Yeah. I didn't tag you. But now you feel like not only addressing me on Twitter, not addressing me as a professional, not addressing me as a man, addressing me to get likes. But see, this is all just, this is all segments for their radio show, basically. Whose radio show? <laughs> the ones on uh, they're, the they're exactly. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The one you're going to go talk about me. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. A, there's a, it's there's just a pretty fodder, good rule, basically. Yeah. There's a pretty good rule. Um, you can determine how much you know or really a lot of the, the, the value of who will pay for your services. Mm -hmm. So if somebody will pay you to coach, to really like to teach sports, whatnot, then your value is then determined by whoever's willing to pay, right? Yeah. So it's if nobody's willing to pay to bring in any journalist to coach football, that's a good way to determine the value. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. There's, there's no journalists that are going straight to – coaching it's not happening. because they were in the locker room and interviewed a lot of players or because they went to journalism school and my si my sister went to journalism school love her to death she's not going to she's not going to get hired any coaching staffs anytime soon mm -hmm. she might she more baseball is kind of her thing but yeah. well um, you got guys like Gottlieb who tried to jump into a university coaching job from you know he played and then he was in the, the media the, but it, but even but, not having that I feel like not having that experience at any school, probably hurt his chances of getting the coaching job. Correct. The, 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 the funny thing about the conversation, again, is Sanchez starts the conversation, mm -hmm. okay? Other people have it. I just jumped in with one guy, right? And so other people get so, their feelings are so hurt. You scream out and you try to blame me for starting it. When you were the one that made the joke about us not being smart, oh, well, they're OU football players, so they know more than right. you. You fucking right we do. 
right? You, I'm excuse my friends from around the kids. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> you damn right I do. Ben sends okay? kid home. We're good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You're damn right I do. I know what BV thinks. I know how Mike thinks. How how Kevin Wilson, Kevin Sumlin, B, uh, Sean McVay. You name it. I know how all those guys prepare, and that is my thing. What I just went through on that situation of ISO into the boundary. That is a segment of one play in a game. Yeah. If a journalist cannot tell me that one segment, you don't know one one thousandth of football. Yeah. So that's why I mean you don't know shit about football. Right. You, I, I didn't know anything about football my senior year. Oh, and then lastly, you want to send shots. Oh, and this, this is a, it was a media show that I had a, a media pod and everything was all good on that one, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? You got the award. Every Oh, they named the award after me, right? <laughs> right. They messed up and named it an award after yeah. me, right? Yeah. yeah. What'd they name the award? Because I could speak respectfully. I could tell you how it is. I give you my homeboy's phone number. I interview with you. I help you do your job. Right? Secondly, you came onto my pod and helped me out, but this is a football pod. Right? You want to talk about their football experience? Like I said the other day, we can talk about my high school beating yours 11 times in a row, mm -hmm. being 11-0. So the person's football career that we do talk about, uh, such and such, uh, you've never beat Carl Albert. Enjoy talking about football <laughs> from the bottom. My, my football career, I had one tackle for loss in eighth grade and then realized golf was pretty much my thing. So, yeah, my football career stopped uh, in eighth grade, uh, Union Silver. I'm not one of those guys. At, I hope after y'all meet me, y'all – would say, I'm not one of those guys that just goes out to Twitter, bruh, I was doing this, and I was cold, bruh, check out my huddle, dog, I was all state this, and blah, 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 I'm not doing that, right, what I do, I tweet the OU games, people get pissed off, or they like it, one of the two, and then certain things happen where we interact with the fans, and lastly, guys, it's, it's y'all have said it, it's there's a certain amount of knowledge, and there's a certain amount, you can even put it out as aggression, there's a certain amount of skills that you learn in college, your first year, that take you way higher mentally than anything. I mean, I wouldn't expect to know some. I wouldn't expect to know the restaurant business mm -hmm. unless I was in it for a year, mm -hmm. owning it. Well, yeah, because you don't know what you don't know until you're in it. Yeah. <laughs> until things are going wrong and you <laughs> yeah. have, and it's your ass yeah. that's grass if you, right. if, if, if something goes wrong. Let's talk about the restaurant business. Let's go ahead and change subjects. I've gotten amped <laughs> up enough. I need another <laughs> beer. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about it. What, what's the ins and outs? What do you live about it? Oh, uh, man. You have a, a great crowd. This dude knows. Every, everybody comes to the door. He opens the door for him, says what's up. So uh, definitely check him it's, out. But uh, tell me about it. Yeah, it's, for those of you who don't know, we're at uh, Trey's Bar and Grill at 108th and Memorial in South Tulsa. Um, just celebrated five years in November. Uh, so very happy about that. Thank you. Uh, well, study show. You make it five years. You're good to go. Well, I hope those studies are right. I think, uh, <laughs> I think, we're, I think we're in good shape. Good. Uh, I've got a lot of good people Uh that have worked for me throughout the years. A lot of good people that work for me right now. Um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, the, 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 the restaurant industry is interesting because you can often build on your success, like in almost every other field, you start at entry level. As you build on your success, it prepares you to eventually have your own, right? Well, restaurants are interesting where a lot of the times the service and bartenders are making more than the managers. So it's hard to get them out, like get them to take a pay cut to learn the management side of things. So I never, I was never a restaurant manager before I opened this. I was 24 when we started opening this, opened it when I was 25. But it was, it was a very much like, I don't know, the restaurant industry is a setup where a lot of times you have an investor um, that hires a bunch of managers and uh, tries to uh, make it work that way. But I don't know, we've been successful by managing uh, labor costs and providing quality. I love it. Quality. I'm going to hit that, but tell me what you think about the burger and fries before you head. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Have you tried it yet? Yeah. Uh, I took a little bite. I was okay. trying to get stuff set up. It was great. Okay. It was great. Somebody so, on Twitter was like, you got it. Yeah, Ron, it, so. uh, Ron Terrell, uh, yeah, the yeah. news reporter. Yeah, yeah they did yeah. the Burger Brothers here. Good yeah, Ron's a, Ron's a good dude, I'm man. friends with some media guys, and I, I thought I was. <laughs> so, well, you were before this well, morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. I, yeah. Before, before, the, before this airs. I wouldn't have made Allstate if I didn't beg people for it. But anyway, right. uh, tell exactly. me about the burgers and fries. So we do, um, we've got to Tulsa's Best Burger by Oklahoma Magazine and uh, the Tulsa World. Um, we do 100% double ground brisket, and then uh, that's all fresh. There's no frozen, no nothing like that. You go to a lot of these food shows. Like, I was one, down one in Fort Worth. You heard me. Thank you so much. And, uh, and it was crazy because you walk around, and everybody's trying to fake their food now, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of cooks just heat stuff up. They don't actually cook anymore. So it's kind of interesting. We get all of our beef in fresh. It's ground by Tulsa Beef. They've been in the business like, like the, since the 30s. They're fantastic. 100% brisket, delivered fresh. And then we uh, put that on a Ponchuanaya brioche bun. It's fresh baked, custom for us. 
Um, it's it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, really, really commit to quality here. Uh, we've won six chili cook-offs with our brisket chili. Uh, we've won Taste of Bixby three times with our orange chipotle chicken. Best it's burger just, in Tulsa. Best burger in Tulsa, yep. And, and you know, Oklahoma Magazine said best, best burger, so I'm just going to go ahead and say best in Oklahoma. There we go. And wait for somebody to come tell me that I'm wrong because – if I can do a side by side taste with anybody, anybody. on their burger, blind side them, uh, oh, blindfold them, it, yeah. won't, it won't even be close. It'll blind side them. Absolutely. Uh, do you want an extra burger or some dessert now? No, yeah, you heard all that. sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I come to Bixby like every couple of weeks. Yeah. So you got to come through, on. man. Absolutely. Yeah, every no time. We uh, we we're, we're home of uh, in football season. Uh, you've seen like the the guy that came up earlier. He had a Steeler stuff on. We're home of the Tulsa Steeler fanatics. Okay. So like uh, all of the uh, um, there's a extremely large group of Steelers fans that watch, watch the games here every Sunday, and we're starting to grow the Vikings crowd because I'm a Vikings fan. I was just going to say, what drew, the, what drew the Steelers? It was honestly, we were hit up, it was a regular of ours, Clint Jones, um, was like, hey, there's this club, the Tulsa Steelers Fanatics, and they're kind of in between places. Um, I'd, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to give your place a shot because a lot of places won't pick a certain fan base because it alienates everybody sure. else, right. and you are so reliant on them. But... We literally we, we put it out. We're like, we'll try it for one year. Why not? It was yeah. our like second year being open. Like we opened in November in the middle of football season. So like, well, like we'll try it, right? So um, we knew it was pretty serious. Whenever some people like they put it on their Facebook page, and then people started coming in throughout the week. And of course, they wear all their Steelers stuff during sure. the week too. So they come in and they're just sitting in chairs. And I'm like, oh, I'll just pick a seat and seat. They're like, no, I'm just getting ready for the season. And they like wanted to make sure we moved speakers around. We dropped this TV. We added that TV. Serious business. And it, what was cool was it was like having a focus group to build the perfect sports bar. Like, because we had these, you know, 150 people come in and basically say, well, this sound should be different. This should drop, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So um, it was really cool. And then, uh, you know, we, uh, we do, uh, you know, raffles and giveaways. And it's they're, they've been a club for a long time, too. So it's they're not as... Um, they're not as negative as some other fan bases. Uh, I know it's uh, broad reaching, so I won't call yeah, out I any. Got you. But I'm uh, say. yeah, uh, <laughs> not as uh, I was going to say the uh, Cowboys, but Fine. the other Cowboys. Yeah. Um, but the the negativity they've seen it all. They've been a club for, and half of them are you know in their 60s, and they've been a. I mean, they've been a successful franchise, a well-run franchise for so long. That, you know, you don't get the people, you know, breaking chairs. You don't right. get all that. Actually, That's we've only thing. had one person break anything, and it was a Cowboys fan <laughs> that came in is. to watch a uh, uh, Steelers-Cowboys game. Yep. And they a, won that game. See, that, that's how it works. Do you have a favorite NFL team? Um, kind of like the Saints are kind of my Ooh, team, but cheaters, I just y'all, yeah, cheaters. That, that's yeah, that's not cheaters. gonna end well. <laughs> cheaters. That's Nobody's gonna, gonna pay end. you to beat me up or anything. <laughs> yeah. Like Greg Williams is out. Like, there's no Bounty Gate stuff going on right now. That okay, awesome. I base not it off me of up. like uh, color coordination though. So oh. black and gold goes with all my, okay. all my clothes. So. Have you been to a Vikings game? <laughs> I have. Yeah, I have. I've been to New Dome or old. Uh, so new. I went old when I was real young, but uh, all my whole family's from there and whatnot. Awesome. I, I was born there. Um, and the new one, I went. It was really cool. Uh, buddy uh, Todd Morrison, uh, who's the general sales manager at Lexus up here, um, real close family friend of mine, got us hooked up with some sideline passes uh, pregame. And the, so it was just cool because I was able to walk into the stadium and just look up and just see what the what the players see come through. The, and that is one of the pre, I don't care about stadiums, prettiest buildings I've ever seen. And it just jumps out at you. It's in the middle of downtown. Yeah, it's not one of the stadiums that's. You know, they have their advantages tailgating, obviously, being out kind of in, in the middle of nowhere, if you will, in the sa- in, in cities. This is downtown. You can walk, yeah. because of the way Minnesota and their skyways go, you can walk into the stadium from, like, a mile away and never go outside. Yeah. Like, because at the second story of every of awesome. every building in Minneapolis, you can just walk through them because yeah. it would shut down the economy, uh, you know, if Minnesotans so, had to walk outside to go everywhere. Yeah. So I've actually been. We did a basketball tournament up in Minnesota, went to the uh, big mall. Oh, there, yeah. So got Mall of America, baby. Target Center. That was back when, dude, uh, Kevin Garnett and Stephon Marbury uh, were oh, playing oh, up yeah. with the damn Timberwolves, dude. I've always said, so I like Boston sports teams mm-hmm. because, and I always have to run it back for people because I feel like Minnesota often is Boston's, like, like farm league team. Our professional teams are the farm league for their professional teams because it's like David Ortiz, Kevin Garnett, Randy Moss. Yeah. Like, we get them all to Boston. Yeah. And then they all go, you know, win titles, you know, set records, all this stuff. I'm like, so I feel like I'm like, I'm like a farm league fan, you know, to like Boston being our pro sport. But yeah. Kevin Garnett was, I actually like the Celtics because growing up watching Garnett and just seeing him get no help 
Like Wally Tragic. Zerbiak, you kidding me? Yeah. Come on, Tough man. One. Best battle you've been to and best bar you heard at one. Man, with, at Gnome 9, John John to Don ended Jack Boy Main's career. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Boy jumped off the stage. Jumped uh, off the stage. I, he, you know, he, he, he may say, oh, there was a guy in the crowd. No, he destroyed him. Um, there was, um, golly, Av in that, Av in Gnome 9 had a crazy swag surf um, bar that was, that was out of control. Um, Pat Stay, I thought. Real deal. I thought Pat Stay 30 um, Shotgun Shug, and he had some, like, we're in Houston, right? So he hits him with the Dream Shake bar because, obviously, you know, Av's dunking on people. And then Pat hit him with the Dream Shake and a couple of these other things. And he flipped the What's Your Life Like because um, that's, you know, Shotgun Shug's thing. You know, What's Your Life Like? You did this and I did that, you know. But Pat flipped it on him and completely just, just – disarmed him you know he, he, he's talking all this tough like no man like we got paid to fly out here like we're all like we're getting paid to to rhyme things and be aggressive like stop like it it was really cool and pat stay had on this weird floral suit and then picked on uh picked on uh shug because he's like i'm up here in a flower suit and you can't come up with a person you can't come up with any right. ad lib on that yeah you can't freestyle to that this is so easy Say anything. Yeah. So then, of Kills course, him. so he says that, and I think in a second, because then Suge comes back, and New Jersey twerks over in his in his ear, and, like, and then Shotgun, you know, uh, says something about, oh, I got the flowers for for your funeral, or whatever. And I was like, come on, man. Yeah. Pat's day was they were all really impressive, but yeah, that man, that that John John bar where he took his chain out. His Blackwell chain threw it into the crowd, and he said, "You want the chain? Now go get it." And then Jack Boy Main literally jumped. Off. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Literally jumped off of the stage yeah. and was done. I was like, I, go. "I don't know how you can three O somebody in two rounds, but Over. he he did it. That's what's up. It was incredible." Brad, I haven't gotten your thoughts on the hot. We got to. I want to hear yours too, Trav. But thoughts on this beautiful trophy, man. I mean, I'm taking it everywhere with me. Like it's both I, it's of ours. hilarious. I love yeah. how you. Uh, do you keep it in the car usually? No, nah, I keep it. You I have keep like it a right baby seat for it. I put in the, the back seat. seat. I put the seatbelt over it. In the oh, front you do? Seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. Put it right over the arm. That thing is heavy. Yeah, like I heavy. don't think ever any everybody when they come see it they don't realize how heavy it yeah. is. Yeah. Well, it's like, weird. It's like a top heavy type situation. Yeah. Because I was uh, I was in the studio one day. JD had gone out and I was cleaning some stuff up after a pod. And I was like, okay, I got to move this, and I started to lift it from the quarterback I was like, or the from the statue there yeah. and I was like oh that's a bad idea like, yeah. I don't want to be the guy who broke Jason White's Heisman so <laughs> there's a certain it. level of stress when you pick it <laughs> yeah. up like, yeah <laughs> I, le- I left it I was like all it's this, history all dog right movie. like you can't trip like I was like I was taking real careful steps national news I look like a dog with shoes on you know how they get that like high stepping like, yeah Broken Heisman at Trace Bar and Grill. <laughs> hey, there's no such thing as bad publicity. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah. 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 It wasn't like it was them, anything else. So anyway. Uh, that, what, but they'll, they'll pull that quote, though, and they'll be like, uh, J.D. said the Heisman is broken. and, and it was Exactly. The worst person in the world. Exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah he, got, he got so enraged after his Twitter beef with Jason Kersey that he yeah. spiked the Heisman <laughs> in, in, a, in, a, in a blind rage. Oh, I got security man. cameras, too, just in case, in case oh. we need to dispute anything. That's but awesome. No, I... I I'm I'm really glad you brought it. Um, got my picture with it out front, of course. The detail of it yeah, is it's amazing. outrageous. It's like amazing. I've, like you know, you'll you'll see them. You know, they've got close up images of everything now. But even the bottom of the cleats, um, man, the grass. You and can everything. tell he's wearing it's, like a shirt, just the yeah, like yeah. holes. Yeah, uh, it's like a sweater shirt. Yeah, it's the, I mean the tuck and then yeah, the fold, shoelaces, the folds of the pants. When it, I mean it's. He's got some crazy calves, <laughs> by the way. Good yeah, goes back. Good <laughs> lord, real deal. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. I, uh, um, yeah, w- when we talked about setting up the pod and whatnot, I knew you had had it, um, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if Jason was just gonna be like, "Hey, can I get my Heisman back?" Oh, yeah. I've never. I can't relate to lending a Heisman to anybody. Yeah, yeah, me neither. So like, I'm not, like yeah. I don't know what protocol is. I'm still just is. waiting on him to come get it back. I, don't I know, know, I know. Uh, well, shit, I'm guarding with my life, beefed up security. Yeah, right. The house. Reggie Bush lent his right. to the NCAA. I don't think they're giving it back though. <laughs> I'm um, really, yeah. Maybe it's like the Stanley Cup. You just get to keep it for a little while. I don't know, fam. Maybe. Try yeah, it. if only you could drink things out of it. There's yeah. not really a cup. Well, if you take the helmet off, there's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a shot. <laughs> yeah, screw it off. Yeah. I was about to say, you could tip it and you could serve a shot maybe yes. in his hand. But <laughs> I love it. But, uh, no, it's beautiful. I'm glad you brought it. Yeah. It's, uh, 
you know, it's real cool. No let's doubt. let's talk business. Uh, Tr- uh, Trav, you're in a business that I love to support, obviously, every day. Uh, Brad, you're just in a business that I enjoy the products. Um, <laughs> let, let's talk about that. Keys to business. Keys to you can talk about what you do after, but um, what what does it take? Uh, is there a secret to it? What's the secret to success uh, in the restaurant business? Then you go. You know the uh, the nobody cares work harder. Uh, you know shirt has a lot of truth to it. Bottom line, um, <clears throat> but also I mean it comes down to the people. Like if you have if you if you don't have the right people that you can trust, they may not. I mean, I've had people work for me in the past that weren't the best salespeople. They were that like, I don't, if you're honest, you can work for me. Like that's all I care about because if I can trust you at the end of the day to not only respect the place but but respect my money because I'm you know I'll give people opportunity. Hey, you know you can make some good money. I'm gonna bring in you know a podcast. We're gonna be busy. I'm gonna do this that and the other like at least have enough respect to protect mine as well. And then I think one thing that I think one thing that a lot of people overlook that I truly believe is valuable is community involvement. Oh yeah. I think that as business leaders, as business owners, we have a certain uh, duty, um, responsibility to our community, you know. Thank you, buddy. To, hey, have a good one. Thank you, sir. You guys. Yeah, have a good one, brother. Enjoy the autograph. Um, so, I think we have a certain you know, responsibility to our community around us, whether that's like we have a something called the give back burger here. So what we do is we, awesome. we take a new burger recipe every month and link up with a different partner every month. So we've done the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. We did the Trimble Strong for Alan Trimble. That's awesome. Um, we've done Little Lighthouse. Uh, this month is Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Like that kind of stuff where $2 from every burger goes to that. And I would love to see a day where every restaurant has philanthropy just built in. Because it's it's one thing to do like a one night fundraiser, you know. We get hit up with a lot of those sure. football uh, team, basketball yeah, team, yeah, and just oh, we're gonna do one night and you get a portion of sales. Well, that while it can raise some money, the awareness isn't raised. What's been cool about this is I've been all posted to Twitter or something, and somebody will be like, "Hey, I uh, I remember we did a Thanksgiving burger, and somebody's like, I don't really like cranberry sauce. I was like, well, you know, it's for a good cause, and he ended up just donating money anyway. on Twitter and yeah. was like, hey, here you go, like. It was cool, and then raising the awareness of especially something like cystic fibrosis um, that a lot of people aren't super familiar with, but we're able to, like, okay, this is the charity. Oh, well, tell me more about it. And then they're able to, you know, bring up that side of it. It's it's one thing to, I could, I could we could just write a check. It's different to have a whole month of supporting a cause um, and bringing awareness while also bringing a little bit of money to it. And it doesn't hurt that the uh, the burgers we've come up with have been, have been really good. They so. have been. So. They've been amazing. Brad, tell me why the pot calls the kettle black. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so he's he's talking about I work at a pot farm, basically, yep. uh, medical cannabis. Uh, we we just we've been open for a year. I mean, uh, crossed the million in sales. Yeah, we did. We did nice. do o- over a million in sales last year. Uh, and we kind of got into it. We were doing some. We have topicals and stuff for pain mm-hmm. and all that, but we didn't get into actually harvesting the cannabis until later in the year so next year or this year actually because the year just started we're thinking it's going to even be bigger so it's wild to see yeah, but you know what's crazy. been crazy about having a business and running a business is just all the things that you know you think oh when i do it, it's almost like having kids when i do it i'm gonna i'm gonna do this this and this and then you get into it and you're like oh well this is why this is this like way. i can see why yeah. they do that yeah that yeah like, oh that makes sense yeah you yeah, know, so and you guys can comment on this. The one thing that I saw, Brad, was just versatility. How you mm-hmm. had to have a well detailed, just outline plan. Mm-hmm. And me going into it in my gym, there were just things. Long story short, I started out training a bunch of women. Women pay you great. I went to high school kids. They ain't got no money. You know what I mean? Fresh out. Yeah. <laughs> so Fresh out. it was. It went from not having to chase anybody for cash to all I did was you know call people and have them try to pay their parents and make sure they drop money off and da 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 da. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that that part of it's hard and and just. The, the change of pace with your business, where your sales are where, where when is this high, when is this low. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you know it's just a roller coaster every day. It's just there's something new every day. I used to plan on just having a surprise every day. Go in with a yeah. smile on your face. Yeah. Expect the unexpected. You, know, oh, yeah. just, you talk to people that like restaurants, like it cracks me up. Service will still come in. So we're going to be busy tonight? I'm like, I hope. Like, yeah, I don't right, know. Like, right. because, yeah. because something, something like this, like something like, oh, uh, it, it's not planned. Like, there's no trend to it. Like, oh, we got out late of, uh, you know, my boy's basketball practice and came by for a burger. Like, 
that's not a it's it's not predictable. Mm -hmm. So you you try and do what you can to kind of stay on the top of people's minds at least because that's why like we've been doing uh, like our theta sauce like we bottled our uh, I'll get a I'll get a I'll get a bottle later uh, to uh, show off for the camera but. We started bottling that partly because we've sold 200 something bottles or whatever for, through here. Part of that is just to be on top of people's minds. Like, it's a lot like a barbecue sauce, whatnot. It's a Theta Burger originated on the west side of the state, um, actually in Norman in the 30s. That. So, it was made for the Theta Thetas. sorority yeah, they, originally. They're, they're so, yeah. anyways, yeah. Um, so, we did it so you'd open up your refrigerator door, see the Theta sauce label, and just think of us and then come up. But if you, and you, it's so hard. You, what are people looking at these days? Are they looking at newspapers? Eh, probably not. Sorry, media people. Sorry. Um, are they? Are they, <laughs> they pissed off me anyway? I don't have any media friends are anymore. Are they? You know what I mean? It's like, the Creed Humphrey Media Award now. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, right. Yeah. Uh, about to be the Buki Media Award. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, with until he graduates. Exactly. So with with that kind of stuff, it's like how do you reach people? I always I always wonder when people are like, oh, this is our first time in, and we've been here for five years. Yeah. I'm like, yep. what what made you come in? Today? I didn't know this was here. I'm so fascinated. Like, what made you come in today? Yeah, what for made sure you, and. I get a lot of, whoa, we were out just driving around. I was like, and as a guy who hasn't had, like, downtime in 10 years, I'm like, what's that like? Yeah, no shit. What's it like just to be like, oh, we'll just get in the car and drive yeah. around. Where are we going to eat today? We'll transform it real. Like, oh, that's what? weird. And what's weird is we're off the beaten path back here. So for those yeah. of you that don't know, we're in a shopping center, but we're at the back right next to the Lifetime Fitness and whatnot. So we do get a lot of gym traffic, but nobody's just driving around and coming all the way back here. It's, it, it's, it's funny to me. So it's, it's – uh, I don't know. Yeah, the, the roller coaster and even like repairs. Like I've gotten way better at plumbing. Oh yeah, and like, Bro, <laughs> like construction, any kind of. I'm like floors. Uh, I'm like cleaning. Yeah. Like one time, I get it. A, a guy that used to work for me, uh, he was. Uh, we had a toilet that wasn't working, wasn't flushing, and I was like, "Man, what's wrong?" Anyways, he called up the uh, plumber to come out, and whatnot, and plumber came out and handed us a bill for 110 dollars just to show up. 110 dollars, and uh, he's like. It was just batteries. I said, what do you mean batteries? Well, toilets now that have the sensors, they're battery operated. So there was nothing wrong with the toilet. just needed to change batteries in the sensor, like AA batteries. I was like, I just spent $110 and somebody <laughs> to change batteries. I yeah. was like, so yeah. now everything, I'm like, nope, yep, yep, I'm doing it. Yep. Unless, Second it's opinion. So, unless it's something crazy, I'm yeah, like, right. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm doing this. Yep. So it's helped because we're opening up another restaurant yeah. uh, here in a couple weeks, actually. And uh, it's been cool because even the, the setup of that and everything has been easier for me because I'm like, oh, that? Oh, well, we can put a door in right there. Or, oh, we can, yeah. yeah. Knock ain't, that wall. We no don't thing. need anybody until we get the nope. damn bolts. Exactly. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. So I was like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, there's certainly the roller coaster aspect of it. It's expect the unexpected yeah. and just roll the punches. I used to write myself notes. I'd, I'd keep 10 lessons each year, and it wouldn't sound right uh, to, to a lot of people, but um, some of them would be, you know, Make sure you're more accessible, but, um, you know, make sure you're accessible to your family as well. Make sure you have a, an identified schedule of when you're going to be off and when you're going to be on. And, uh, you know, just there's just so many little things that you learn in business that really, really carry over. want to get your thoughts on OU Football. It's OU Football Podcast. Um, yeah. We lost by 40, 35. It wasn't close. I know. I know. Uh, the transfer portal. There's been 20, 30 guys uh, that have been transferring. Um, tell me what you thought. We'll, we'll end up. Come on, Mario. Like, Mario Solomon there. Simmons, the man. How you feeling, brother? Good, Good to brother. see you. We're finishing up this segment. You, 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 the superstar. So yeah, you know. I'm warming up your seat. Yeah, warming up so. your seat. But tell me what you think. OU football. Uh, Burrow seven touchdowns and a half. I was pretty embarrassed. Uh, transfer portal. Everybody's leaving. If it was the Titanic, I would say uh, everybody's the ship's sinking. But we're yeah, OU, so I, uh, hopefully we're all right. Yeah, I think I think we're all right. You look at some of the talent that Riley's brought in the last couple of years. I honestly, going into this year, and no disrespect to players on this team or Jalen or anybody like that, like before the season started, I told people up here, because obviously the sports bar, a lot of people come in wanting to talk about OU football, right? So I was telling everybody, you know, we're, we're 2020. Like, look forward to 2020. This year might be rough. To, I think this is one of Lincoln's best coaching jobs to get us all the way to the playoff win. Yeah. We, we overachieved. Right. Um, we shouldn't have beat Baylor. K State wasn't an anomaly. We yeah, we overachieved. Um, you know, coming down to the last play of the game of uh, Iowa State, and just you know, you saw some things. But we, the team, if you if you just if you look if you look at recruiting rankings and buy into them um, as much as they've been evidenced over the composites and whatnot, two four seven all that. Like we're bringing in more talented teams than Bob was in his later years. For sure. So, granted, we need to start 
getting the kind of talent that mm -hmm. Clemson has and all that. And I think we're turning that around. Yeah. I think this mass exodus of players in the transfer portal is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think I'm excited about the JUCO talent coming in. I am so excited about well the the, the quarterback battle, but I'm excited about Spencer yeah. Rattler. I sure. think he's and and even talking like like Theo Wees was talking like look. Um, you know, are you getting discouraged about? It? He's like, I was behind the best receiver in the country. I was behind C.D. Lamb, like a top ten pick. Like it, I'll, I'll wait my turn. Like it's fine. So I think you're seeing, I think you're seeing some players go into the portal that are not as. This is gonna sound bad, but are, are not in in high demand like Jaden Hazelwood going to the portal would yeah, be. Yeah. Theo Wee's going Real. to the portal would be. Real. Like if. It's, it's not our guys that are like, okay, have been – and I don't know, I'm not on the inside, so I don't know how many of these kids were kind of told, hey, maybe you should transfer, you know, because you know, you're not, you're not going to cut it here, you're not going to play. Like, so I think there's a hell of a lot of room or a lot, a lot of reason for optimism moving forward. I think Grinch, um, not even – and I don't know if it's a contract detail or whatnot, but not even taking an interview with Washington State mm – -hmm. Um, for the head coaching position, a place that he just was, a place that, you know, a couple years ago, obviously. But for not even taking a look like that, um, I do think the defensive coordinator at OU is a better job than the yeah. than the head coach at Washington State. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what Beamer does um, if Virginia Tech becomes open for some reason. I think Fuente, it's, you know, he just posted yeah, a picture the other Baylor. day. Fuente, big, big union guy, hey. you know. Uh, so... Uh, Got Dom coming Dom in later. later. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm so excited. Dominique Franks was yeah. uh, was going to be my campaign manager for student council treasury in my junior year in high school. But Real. we were going to make smart some, man. We were going to make. I was like, yeah, who's the who's the you know head guy uh, on campus right here? Well, it's uh, our superstar athlete, him and Chase Nelson. Okay. Um, the end or D tackle or something. O line. Yeah, man. yeah, uh, yeah. Defensive end, yeah. Uh, defensive tackle. Uh, went to play at Tennessee, I believe. I remember that. So uh, yeah, those guys ran school. It was really cool. So. Yeah. Anyways, he talked about putting my name on a or put my face on a shirt and then putting like bedazzled like diamonds as a diamond chain under me. He's like, those are going to be the campaign shirts. I was That's like, awesome. all right, whatever, man. That's awesome. So, well, yeah, and when I said it shouldn't probably shouldn't be Baylor, it was a close game. I felt feel like our offense went cold. It could have easily went either way, either game that we played them. Uh, Brad, oh, good. I don't I don't think that Jalen saw the field particularly well. We had a fresh O line too. I mean, Creed, your 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 veteran there, I guess you could say. Even even he's still fresh by. Oh, line standards. Um, but you got four new starters across the line, and I don't think Jalen saw the reads that we necessarily wanted him to see. I think I think Spencer – I think if you did a, like, create a player and uh, maybe if NCAA football comes back. Um, if you did a, it, I hope right? so. If you did a create a player, I think Spencer Rattler would be the create a player that Lincoln Riley would pick. Yeah. I think he's got the speed. He's got the arm. He's got, he's got, he's got everybody to arm talent that – probably Mahomes came out of high school with. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it's a pe – people always want to compare people to people because they need a point of reference, right? That's why every draft every draft analysis – what's his comps? What, because we need things to – we need things to – a point to, of reference yeah. or else we don't understand them. Yeah. So I'm – yeah, I'm super excited about the talent that Lincoln's bringing in. Even even past I, – I think we're um, – 2021 recruiting is going well. I know everybody wants to freak out about Brock, but – We'll be fine at quarterback as long as Lincoln Riley is, you know, at the helm. Um, but I'm really excited about some of the defensive talent we're bringing yeah. in. Brad, you want to end it? Let me know how you feel about OU football, brother. Man, I, it, it was just an amazing season on the inside doing the pod because you told me, okay, these are the games they're going to win. These are the games that I don't, I don't know about. And then – Basically, everything that you were predicting. Came I was worried through. about K-State. I was worried about Texas. I was worried about Baylor. I mean, um, before we do get out of here, though, I, I wanted to ask you about the trans transfer thing again, though. Yeah. Uh, you so know, glad you said that. A lot of people, I feel like, or maybe this is, just, this is just me, though, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, like, when you see somebody transfer, you think, oh, I wonder why they, uh, what they think was better or, you know. But there's a lot of reasons to yeah. transfer. And some of them are that. Is it that they're asking people to transfer oh, to make Brad. room for other people? Thank you so much for asking, buddy. <laughs> I will put it to you like this. I'm not going to say no names. Okay. okay. When we went to, it was either New Orleans or USC. It was right at the national championship. I can't remember. I think it was USC. Mm -hmm. Maybe New Orleans. My position coach at the time, I won't say his name. I'm not going to say anybody's names. But <laughs> the conversation went like this. We had a four-star recruit. He was a receiver who had been on scout team the entire year. He worked his butt off. He hadn't made many body changes. Whatever happened, they told his ass, when we go home for this bowl game, you need to stay there. 
And the kid said, what do you mean? Yikes. I want to come back. He said, we probably won't have a spot for you. Mm -hmm. They run kids off. If you don't, the scholarships are guaranteed now. But if you quit, that scholarship doesn't matter. Or I can say, hey, man, you, just like with Logan on the podcast, you're injured to play here, but you can go, we clear you, and you can go play somewhere else. Yeah. Or the conversation is, hey, brother, have you not thought about transferring? Because we're two, we're three deep. We're not yeah, even thinking about we, you. We just want not you to go somewhere you. where you can really show your talents, grow your game. You or can, these guys are they're, yeah. they're salespeople. How'd yes, you, how'd you get on right. there in the first place? There you go. However you got people there in the first place, you can equally spin that to yep. get them out. But here's what I want people to think about, Trav, and you, Brad. Imagine being that signee or recruit's mother. Yeah. And ten coaches came and promised your baby mm -hmm. in that living room, I'm going to take care of your son. Your son ain't got nothing to worry about. He ain't, he, I'm going to he gonna graduate. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And not even a year later, his ass is back in your house saying, I can't go nowhere. Right. I, I, what, what happened? Well, you I look did like my a best. Martell type situation. And, and, He's been and all over the place. Listen, there's there the reason why I even say this, and then I want to comment on the Schmitty thing too, is yes, there are people who transfer out who are just soft. Okay, that happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are people who can't make it through the workouts and transfer. Yes, there are people who can't play and transfer. Okay, there are also people that work their butt off. Don't do anything wrong and are sent home. Yeah, through no fault of their own. None. And that's not right because you missed or because he didn't develop or whatever reason. Right. Or, or a coaching change. Bingo. Or something like that, like, like we're seeing now. Like, all right, uh, Alex Grinch's scheme doesn't fit certain players. And that's why I thought we were we, – we, that's why I was yep. like, okay, we'll see about next year because – this year, he was playing with nobody that he recruited to That's play right. those positions. That's right. Well, lastly, and then people ask me about Schmitty and if he causes injuries. Listen, some of the shit we did was rough in there. I ain't going to lie to you. There were some people that got injured during our workouts. Some of the shit I don't agree with, some of it I do. All I know, he was mentally, physically, emotionally, he had us on a different level. And there was a lot of shit that went on. But, dude, football's that way. Uh, the, yeah. the thing I tell people, like, why the fuck do you run stadiums before practice? Well, shit, if I ran 50 yards and I got to carry 10 people, do I want to come out the game or do I want to go back in the next yeah. play and try to go 50 more yards? Right. Because that shit feels a lot like running stadiums with having 10 people on you, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 it's a slippery slope, um, it, you know, and I go back to just the hours that he put in. Uh, so, uh, but, man, let me, while we're, th while we're here, Trav, Thank you, brother. We we owe you. Absolutely. We've got to make the too. We got to make this a, a an annual deal. Maybe yeah. bring him some products and things. I don't know if you add, you know whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> but then burgers were amazing, bro. Uh, look that's forward why, to just killing the pot here. That's why I was so glad uh, that I wasn't an elite athlete because you know if I got cut, I wouldn't want to. I back got you. That's got why you. I was blessed to not bottom line be an elite yeah. athlete. <laughs> why did you fail your drug Thank test, you. yeah, Travis? Exactly, exactly. I just I can chill over here. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Hey, but I do appreciate you guys coming. No problem. Uh, this was awesome. I mean, I. I, I love Twitter. Just sure. popping up and being like, "Hey, y'all want y'all want yeah. to come to a podcast?" I was yeah, like, absolutely. "Oh, cool!" Now, now we got a podcast. So absolutely, I'm really excited uh, for the next two uh, segments. Uh, I think those are going to be awesome. Uh, more. It's going to be good to see Dom. I haven't seen him in a few years. So, sure. absolutely, y'all come up here, Trace it. Bar and Grill, brother. Thank you, uh, my boy Brad Reed, Travis Davison up here. You want to tell the address, everything? Tell yeah, me how to get here. It's a. Uh, it's easier just to tell you how to get here. 108th and Memorial on the west side of the street. You see Lifetime Fitness. You see Tokyo Guard on the corner. We're on the back side. Tulsa's best burger. Tulsa's best chili. Fresh food. Good stuff. Um, it's all ages, non-smoking. As you can see, you probably got some little ones that have been walking in behind me. So uh, big patio, TVs, all the whole nine yards. So I love come it, Come check man. us out. Brad, awesome pod. We're going to put some highlights together for you, some battle rap highlights. Yeah. Maybe I'm get ready. some pictures for you. I'm ready. You send me some, yeah. uh, some of You got to come to Nome with me. For if sure. we go down in Houston, you got to come with me. I'm in. We're in it. We're plus, in it. So. Plus, I, you know, you, you, you're bigger than a lot of people up there. So, so if, I got you. Know, you. I, need, I got you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, st I'm, still, yeah. I'm still the white guy in there. Fullback Let's be honest. I'm I got still you. the white guy He with me. He with me. He good. I said he with me. Maybe wear a suit. All right? Yeah, don't get me out there battling, all right? I'll. <laughs> uh, I'm JD. I'll make you go crazy. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So we're gonna, we're gonna that. work on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, fullback. <laughs> Great podcast coming. Trace Barn Grill. Come see us. All right, all right. Welcome to Fullback. You uh, just man. Uh, there's. I'm gonna say this solo, but I've said it before. A lot of people. I've said it, my favorite. Po this is easily gonna be my favorite podcast because you're doing the most important work. I'm honored to have Demario Solomon Simmons in. How are you feeling? Man, what's up, man? Absolutely, I'm honored to brother. be here, Absolutely. man. I appreciate the platform to put together and get the brothers to get to come together. What I like about your show, man, is number one, you bring people from all different eras. 
And then you let people come on and talk about not just football, but life and what's going on in that brotherhood. That's what we really miss as former players, regardless if you were a Heisman Trophy winner. Don't matter. Which I got a Heisman Trophy sitting in front of me. <laughs> I've never seen a Heisman Trophy, so this is pretty dope. Jason White's Heisman Trophy. Or if you're just a little old walk-on like myself, man. That's so, all right, you know, though. Let's, let's start by that. Yeah. Um, there is no high school, Brad. No high school has produced more NFL talent than Booker T High School at the state of Oklahoma. To me, uh, first of all, my, my junior year, the season of 2000, we stole a state championship. Yes, you ring. did. Yes, you we did. We go from Robert yes, Meacham. Yes, Mark you Anderson did. was out of the game. Yeah. But easily, I, I tell people all the time, I go through the roster and I'm like, you guys don't understand. It's ridiculous. Mike Wilson had OU as a sophomore. It's Rico ridiculous. A&T, Robert Meacham. Talk about what it was like at Booker T back when you were there. Just let us know. Um, man, you know, first of all, like you said, Booker T was always in my heart and my dream school. My, my mother went there. My grandmother went there, class of 50. That's what's she, up. She just passed away last month. Johnny Mae Simmons, rest, rest in peace. peace. You know, going to Booker T was amazing because my cousin, Andre Henderson, was class of 82, and he was a starting running back. They ran the wishbones, won the halfbacks. And going to the games as a kid, it was like going to the NFL. Oh, yeah. And Jersey's then, on. Yeah. Then you've seen all these guys, like you named the Patrick Collins, uh, Reggie Brooks. I mean, the names go on R. and on and on. R.W. And these oh, are guys I play with. Yeah. So I get to Booker T. I'm a freshman. It's like I'm seeing real grown-up guys on the field. Derek McGee used to be at OU. Oh, he was there. Jawan Penny, another OU guy, was there. Kevin Lockett, who's <laughs> the who's the K State and Mr. the father of Aaron Lockett, the brother. I mean, the brother of Aaron Lockett, the father of Tyler Lockett. How they didn't go to OU, that's a whole nother that's, deal. We get that. You know, LaRon Rogers. I mean, I literally played with at Booker T. I played with seven pros. Seven guys, pros, a lot. that I played with in <laughs> high school. Probably about 30 guys go D1. You know, and, and then the basketball team, there was two first-round draft picks on the basketball team Eton, when I was Ryan there. Humphrey. Eton, Ryan Humphrey. So that era from 91 to 94 was a golden era in Booker T football. And, man, I was on that team my senior year. Our W's on that squad. W. McCoy is one of the greatest athletes ever. Demond Parker, who I consider to be the greatest running back ever out of Oklahoma. That's, that's just my personal opinion. Watching Demond. Jonathan Brown, my classmate, went to Tennessee, number two in the t Tennessee history, only behind Reggie White, played 10 years pro yeah. ball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're talking about Marshall Gordon, two state All American, All State football, basketball, went to TU. Shan Jordan, one of the greatest players ever to play at NSU Division II school. Man, these guys was ballers. And, you know, I was happy to be on that squad and be able to contribute, be able to start. And, unfortunately, man, we never won a state championship, that as sucks. you stated. That sucks. You know, All I, these state championships, man, that sucks. I can't believe my senior year, man, we were ranked number 23 in the nation, number one in the state the whole year. We smashing everybody. We beat Edmond. At Edmond, they had my boy Marcus Nash. That was a beast. Marcus Nash. Tennessee. Tennessee. But people don't realize that Marcus Nash grew up down the street from me here in Tulsa. And he played at Booker T. And two after his sophomore year, his mom sent him down to live with his dad in Edmond. And that's how we lost Marcus Nash. That's crazy. But we beat them in Edmond. Come back in, number one in the state. Smash out Broken Arrow first game, 39-0. Come back, play Edmond at home. I turned my ACL five minutes into uh -huh. the game. And we end up losing like 17 to 11. Yeah. And to this day, man, that's my biggest regret that we didn't win a state championship with all that talent. How'd you end up at OU? Man, it's a long story. It's interesting, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm playing with these guys, and, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, hey, I'm seeing all my guys going to D1 schools, and I'm like, I'm starting with these guys. I know I can play at this level. Man, I told my ACL, uh, was doing a lot of stuff I wasn't supposed to do. Hey, if I was in today's era with all the social media, I might not be a lawyer today. They'd be holding so much against That's real. you. That's so real. I had a bunch of stuff that was keeping me I'll from. I'll tweet for you. You Just, tweet for uh, yeah, me, I got man. you, fam. Don't worry. So long story short or shorter, I end up, all my D1 scholarships went away. I end up going to NSU out of high school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Didn't really want to go down there, but like, look, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to rehab my knee. I was a medical red shirt that first year. Rehab my knee. Come back in that next year as a red shirt, and I'm going to get out there, hey, let's do this thing. I'm in a great shape. I get out there, man, I'm like 14. And I'm looking around, I'm like, wait a minute, man. I'm down here at this little bit of school. All my boys are playing at these big schools. They got me down as 14, 14. I'm like, look, if I can't play at the big schools, I just won't play. I just left the team. Moved back home. Was like, man, maybe I'll just go walk on somewhere. Hurt my shoulder, working out. I was like, you know, I'm done with football. Went to TCC for a semester, 
got depressed, dropped out of school, moved to Dallas. Was down in Dallas working at my cousin's little air freshener business. A lot of people don't know this. Real. Talk, talk my wife, Real. now wife Mia, to drop out of school. She was going to Langston. Talked her to drop you, out <laughs> and move to Dallas with me. That's real. I'm down there in Dallas, man, making 10 bucks an hour, seeing what it really means to be low income and not have a real shot at life. I'm like, I, it's more than this. I wrecked my car down there, moved into an apartment with I'll run down apartments, roaches everywhere. I'm like, man, this, this, this more for me than this. At that point, I said, you know what? Now I'm going to come back. I'm going to walk on to OU. By this time, you got to remember, I graduated in 94. This is 97. I'm three years out from ever playing, having played a football game. Not working out, not like Nothing. that. Nothing. Yeah. Everybody's like, man, this is crazy. You're not walking on to OU. I'm walking <laughs> on to OU. Man, I, 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 finished, I finished a TCC. Transferring to OU. I needed three hours to get my associate's degree, okay? But I was like, I'll just take that little college algebra. I was running from algebra. I'll take that when I get to OU. Seventh, eighth grade math teacher in me is disappointed in you, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I had flunked, I had flunked algebra as a I freshman. I understand. It's and so got important passed that all the way through. Yeah, I'll just give you a hard time. No, I'm just yeah. telling you. Yeah, that's part of the story, though. <laughs> and then when I got to NSU, they put me in remedial <laughs> algebra. And I was like, you know, I'm going to drop that. So when I get to TCC, they like, I'm making straight A's by this time I'm at TCC. But I was afraid of algebra. Yeah. It's relevant to this story. So I get down to OU. I'm like, I'm just going to take algebra when I get there. I'm working out with the squad, working out with Coach Johnson. Now, I need to tell you this. John Blake, he's an in-law of mine. He's married to my wife's first cousin, who's like her older sister. Wow. So I know John. And I told John, I said, man, I'm, I'm going to walk on. And then I said something really stupid. But I didn't know how stupid it was at the time. I said, treat me like every other walk-on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not at all. Was, <laughs> you regretted that one real quick. That was quick. a really stupid real thing to quick. say. Because yeah. I didn't understand what that meant. But he did. So, man, I get down to OU. I'm, I'm working out, doing a summer workout. Coach Johnson. They like, you know, people knew who I was. They knew me from Booker T. You know, they knew I could play. I'm working out, whatever. Three weeks before tour days start, Coach Johnson, Merv Johnson, bring me into the, his office. He's like, Solomon, I, I got some bad news. I was like, what's up, coach? He said, you're not going to be eligible. I said, what you mean? As you know, as I know now, when you come from junior college, what, you got to come in what? All the credits. Got to come in with your degree. Yep. He said, we just realized you're three, three hours short. I was like, what? Now, remember, I, I'm already out three years. Mm -hmm. You only get five to play four. So I only got two years to play. So if I lose a year, I'm never playing, right? Who's going to come in one year and play? I'm like devastated. I'm like, coach, well, what can I do? He said, the only thing you can do is if you could find an intercession course, which I didn't even know what that was at the right. time, an intercession course, and get that on file before school start, you could come out with the regular walk-ons. Because I was, you know, I was like a preferred walk-on. Right, right. You can come out with the regular walk-ons when school start, the Rudy walk-ons. I was like, all right. I go home. Now, this is 1997, 98. You know, there's no internet. I ain't know I'm just going through the phone book. I'm going through the phone book looking for calling every college in Oklahoma. Now, remember, I just told you I flunked high school freshman algebra. I told you I, I dropped out of remedial algebra. It's real. I told you I, re I ran from algebra in junior college. Now I'm going to take an intercession course algebra. Woo! Three weeks. I'm going to take Get three weeks right. and put a whole semester <laughs> yeah. algebra. But I'm like, I can do this. I can do this. I'm, I can do this. I, I called it. every school in the state of Oklahoma I could find the phone book. Every school like, no, we don't offer that. We don't offer that. I literally fall on my back crying like a baby. And that's the day I knew I was going to marry my wife, Mia. And she was like, nah, heck nah, this can't be. All this work you done done. Right. I don't know how I missed it, but she found Oklahoma Christian College in Edmond. Yeah. Christian University. Yeah, not OCU. OCU. Not, o not Oklahoma City not, University, not Oklahoma Christian. Yeah, yet. I got you. She finds that college. I called them. They're like, yeah, we got a course, but you got to enroll today. Woo. I drive up to, to Edmond, go to try to enroll. They tell me. You can't enroll. I said, why not? They said, you don't have the prerequisites. Because I had no algebra, any, any math for me. They said, this, this, you can't, this is too advanced for you. I said, no, you don't understand. If I don't do this, blah, 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 what can I do? They said, well, only thing you can do if the teacher gives you an exception. But well, where's the teacher? They're like, we don't know the college campus. How the hell we know where a right. teacher is? I go around the campus. I don't know how I found a teacher. I find the teacher. I give him my story. He said, man, I just don't think you're going to be able to keep up. You just, you know, this is going to go real fast. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. He said, all right, I'm going to let you in. I'm just letting you right now. This is going to go real fast. I can do it. He let me in the class. We had three tests and a final. 
After the first week, what do you think I made on the test? I'm going to say D or C. F. F minus. <laughs> <laughs> I made a 33, 32, 33%. F minus. It was like looking at Chinese. I believe it. I'm living over there at Summer Point. Yep. Out there in Norman. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't get this. I'm depressed. I'm, 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 I'm just, I can't believe this. So I do what all depressed people did back there. I ordered a pizza. Absolutely. From Pizza Shuttle. You Absolutely. remember Pizza True. Shuttle? Yeah, 12 at, 12 at night. It didn't taste good until after 12. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. You get you a, a Supreme for two ninety nine. Right. Where, where they do that at? Not at all. You ain't going to believe this. It's a true story. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't get this. I call the pizza. God delivers the pizza. I'm so dejected. I'm so low. I see all my dreams going away. I'm never going to play at OU. I asked the pizza delivery guy. This is a humble. This is this is this is a, a lesson. Yeah. I humble myself to the police pizza delivery guy, and I say, hey, "Man, do you know how to do math?" I'm calling it math. The guy said, "I'm a math major, major uh, graduate student." That's college say, for you. What? That's college for you. That's God that for, for you too. Though. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. He said, "I'm God a mathematics graduate student getting his PhD." And he saw how you felt. And he tutored me. And he tutored you. And I'm here today because awesome, of that man. man. For that man tutoring me. And get me past that algebra cast. What a story. And, and let me tell you, it don't end there. I got to finish. I know the long no, story. You good, dude. After, after he to tours me, time time. I, 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 I make up my grades. I got I to gotta pass the last final so I can get my grade posted to OU. I pick up my grade. I made a D. I made two Ds in college. That was one of them. I made a D in the class. Happiest D I ever got in my life. <laughs> yes. But I had to have my grade my, with my degree posted to OU by five on that Friday. I pick up my transcript at 12 in Edmond. I had to drive here to Tulsa Ooh. to downtown, T, what we call TJC at the time, Tulsa Junior College, run in the building, go to the office, give them my transcript showing I got the three credit hours. Go back to Norman. Boom, go back to Norman. <laughs> I got back to Norman Damn. and got my, my transcript in at 448. Oh. 448. College, dog. That's college. That's real. And then I came out there on the first day of practice. Because you know the OU, yeah. anybody can walk on. Yeah. You can't, it's a yeah. public institution. Yeah. I'm out there with just everybody. And I'm out there like, oh, my God. And then I go to the locker room, and they say, where are you going? Because, you know, during the summer, I was over there with all the regular players. They say, no, 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 buddy. Your locker room's over there. Back then, they put the walk-ons the in The locker room or whatever it the was. Business locker room. Business locker, I heard it was So pink. that's how I got there, buddy. Yeah. Brad, you got any questions you want to ask him about the season there, how what his career was like, anything uh, at OU? Well, it just one thing you were just reminding me of, though, I, you know, I used to coach basketball at the Boys and Girls Club, so I, I talked to a lot of these kids as they've gotten older. And so, like, I remember one of them told me the other day, uh, he was like, man, I, I didn't get on the basketball team because they wanted me to have my physical by 5 o'clock, <laughs> and I got there at 5.15. I was like, why weren't you at 5 in the morning? Right, like, right, right. You know, and I think that's – what separates, you know, some of the people who have the ability, but maybe not the want to. And that's why we're going to get into it. That's why this is so important, Brad, in this podcast, because mm -hmm. there's a gentleman sitting right beside us that does a, a uh, young men's camp for mm -hmm. 500 to 1,000 kids every year. He's right. dedicated to showing them how to tie a tie, how to interview, <clears throat> how to do that. He's doing the most important work in Oklahoma. I'm this just telling you. Oh, man, come I, on, Y'all saying it, dude. I worked <laughs> with a lot it. of kids that they didn't have anybody to show they, them I'm going to say it. Before we get into that, so I want to hear about your career. Talk to me about the playing career. Tell me about this play that you were in on. Oh, man, all absolutely. Those absolutely. You know, I started, like I say, I started off as just a tackling dummy, and I was what they call a Thursday All-American because every day I was happy to be there. So I'm going 100% the whole time. And I learned something, man. As a walk-on, you have to earn everything you get. And Tom's the first him. thing you got to earn is the respect. And once you earn the respect of your teammates, then the respect from the coaches will follow. At least that was my experience of seeing it. So I got an opportunity by the middle of the year. You know, I got on kickoff team, you know, and got to make some plays. Now, my first ever time on the field was against uh, Baylor. We played Baylor at home. I'm on the kickoff team. I'm like a little backup on the kickoff team. I'm hyped. And our starting fullback at the time, you would like Mike Rose, uh, rest in peace. Uh, he passed away on a, a motorcycle accident a couple years ago or whatnot. Good brother. We had scored. It was real hot that day. Mm -hmm. I remember we scored. Defense got a fumble. Then we scored again. And so 
Mike was he was gassed. They was like, Solomon, you know what to do. Solo, call me so solo. I like, hell yeah, coach. I'm <laughs> gotta ready. Go, gotta go. I'm ready, coach. Right. I get out there, man. It was just like the Rudy moment. I'm looking around like, hey, I said, I cannot believe I'm on the I'm gonna make this tackle. I'm hype. We kick off the ball. I mean, you're talking about I'm running a four three down there. I'm whew, whew. I see the ball carry. I said, I'm finna blow him up. I got ear hole. Boom! Ah. I'm in the air. Parallel feet in the air. <laughs> I'm like, I wait, I get up. You know how you get hit so hard. Yeah. And, you're, and everything's, you're, gone. everything's gone. I can't hear. All I can think about is going to the sideline was film. I'm like, oh man, I get my first time ever in the OU game and I get my head blocked off. <laughs> Fortunately, awesome. we were all sides. Ran the kickoff again. I got the tackle. tackle yes, sir. So, so in film, the whole time, I'm like, oh damn. We just went past it because it was all size That's what's up. So that was my first tackle. So that was my junior year. So I got to play on all special teams, uh, kickoff, kickoff return, all that stuff, punt, punt return. And I remember we got, we got destroyed by Nebraska, man, 69-7. I mean, destroyed. And they won a national championship year, so that's the 97 season. We get destroyed by them. But I got, a, I got to get a tackle on a kickoff. And I was very excited about that because my whole life, I had grew up, it's OU Nebraska, OU Texas. I'm like, man, no matter what, whatever happens in my career from now, I'm in the history book that I had at least one tackle in, in what was considered to me Real. the most important game Absolutely. You know, every year growing up. That's awesome. So my junior year I come in, I mean my senior year, we, we fire our coaching staff. We bring in Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan's new defensive coordinator. He comes in, he said, look, I don't know none of y'all, and everybody start from zero. So I already knew. I knew I wasn't the fastest. I knew I wasn't the biggest. I knew I wasn't the strongest, but I knew I knew more football and I was the smartest. Real. I already knew that. Real. So I'm like, look, I'm going to pick this up. Started off the spring at fourth team, ended the spring second team. Came in, played every game I see in a year, uh, uh, meaningful minutes. And this play right here you're talking about, this was against California. It's uh, our third game of the year. See, we started out 2-0. We, we beat North Texas. Then we came in, we, beat, we played TCU, they had LaDainian Thomason. We beat them. They were winning that game, the whole game, 9-0. The whole game, 9-0. One minute and like 50 seconds left, we get the ball to go down and try to score. On fourth down, with like 40 seconds left, our quarterback was Patrick uh, Fletcher, Pete Fletch, Fletch. Fletch. Pete Fletch. Love that dude. Pete Fletcher, our quarterback, he throws a pick to this linebacker who had had like a career game. He had like 20 tackles three sacks, and that was his third pick. All he had to do was fall down, game's over. He tries to return the ball. Jason Freeman, our tight end, tackles him and strips him of the ball. Next play, they throw a bomb to Chris Blocker. We score, make wow. it nine to seven. Next play, we do the kick, onside kick. We get the onside, then we kick a field goal, go wow. up 10-9. And then we kick the ball off and Roy Williams blows the guy up. So hard, the game's over. That Stockton McDougal comes over. He's so hyped, he hits Roy, and he hurts Roy's back. And that's why Roy <laughs> had the red shirt that year. That's, that's awesome. true story. Ask Roy that's about awesome. that. I'm going to call him on the way home. Ask, ask Troy, ask call, Roy I'm about that. True story. But here's the thing. After the game, we had a benches clearing brawl. Really? Everybody, the coaches, Find everybody it. was fighting, and nobody got suspended. That's awesome. It was not on – this is why it's a different era. Yeah, very true. It was not on Facebook. Very it true. was not – it was no Facebook. It was no, no sport. It wasn't even on Sports Center. So I had my best game that game, that TCU game. Had my only sack that in my career in that TCU game. And so we ended up playing Cal in this game. I'm telling you right here. That's this picture. Yeah. And we lost that game 13-12. Yeah. Then we lost um, – he, we, over here, uh, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. Y'all know him well. He, he was nice. He was nice. He was nice as This hell. is my brother right here. Okay. So this is my I, guy. This is my I brother. I told you. You celebrity around here. Hey, um, we lost 13 to 12 against Kyle, man. And we missed an extra point and two field goals under 30 yards. Our field goal, was, our field goal kicker was Ferguson. Jeff Ferguson. Yep. But he was a freshman then. He was an All-American by the time you came along. Right, right. He's a freshman when we got him. Right. The next game we played Colorado. We lose to them 25 20, 26 24. We missed an extra point, two field goals on the 30 yards. You know, we easily could have been 4 0, ranked in the top 15. 
Otherwise, we two and two, and then hey, we end up season yeah. five and six. One of one of the misconceptions is that that y'all were trash. I, in my opinion, y'all's defenses were really good. It was just number the five offense. in the nation. It was just the offenses that were tough. Uh, let's go on to past playing career, uh, Brad. This guy is a lawyer. Uh, have you ever thought about getting your law degree, or are you like me and just a fan of Law and Order? Oh man, yeah, I studied <laughs> philosophy, and uh, I wanted to like maybe eventually get into law or something because yeah. you know I like to argue, but yeah. but <laughs> I, I just watched for Detective Benson <laughs> shit. I I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know what y'all talking about. Yeah, um, yeah. Is Benson but going in? Let's I, go. I know you had to do a lot of school, so I respect yeah. that. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, I will. And that's what makes my experience at OU so special because I, I got to really overlap between the Blake years and the Stoop, Stoop years. And so a lot of guys that, even though I didn't play with them as teammates, I was there because I worked in the athletic department. And as JD know, I created uh, the Bridge Builders, African American Student Athlete Network uh, that worked with a lot of black athletes at OU. So you know, it was a lot to go to grad school first at OU, mm-hmm. uh, get my master's in higher education. That's why I was working at the athletic department and student affairs. And then going to law school, at the time, out of 160 incoming law freshmen, it was only three African Americans, only one brother, that was me. But it was a cool experience. I loved everything about it. And it was really something that really set me apart today for being able to do what I'm doing now. Absolutely. Man, there's, I'm so excited to get on this topic. <laughs> Brad, there's some things you don't know about me. I'm going to confess. Okay. I was born and raised in Presbyterian. I was born in Presbyterian Hospital on the east side of Oklahoma City, brother. Mm-hmm. My dad was a federal officer at the Oklahoma City Housing Authority. My mother gave Section 8 house, project housing away at the Oklahoma City Housing Authority right across from Douglas High School. My dad was a Douglas Trojan, graduated from Langston University. Um, I, my sister graduated from Langston. I was an east side kid growing up. Me, Dewan Woods, and Donovan Woods played on the same little league team right. growing up. Right. I moved out of the hood. My brother, we lived in a crip neighborhood. My brother was getting chased home from school. My mama didn't want to have that for her babies. I feel like I turned my back on the hood, but I can never turn my back on the hood on where I grew up. And I say the hood, but I don't appreciate even the stereotypes that come along with it. because. That's right. Because right. where I grew up, I saw a beautiful nature of people picking up each other. Sure, there was some That's gang right. violence in the in 1980s. I could go on the crack epidemic. Right, but again, right. my dad was trying to save lives. That's right. You know? I grew up, I moved out in the suburbs. I, I grew up in a lighter complexion area. <laughs> I still lived That's over by Murder One. It. Yeah, I still, I'm a mixed kid, though. I'm going to tell you how I feel. Yeah, right. Um, as I got into college, I, I, I graduated with an African-American studies minor. I, when I took African-American studies classes, it fucking scared me how much of my black history I did not know. Right. We had an experiment, Brad. They, they had the whole class stand up. There's 40 people in there. White kids, kids, and she segregated the class on purpose. You had about 25 white kids, you had about 10 mixed kids or native, and you had about 15 brothers in there, right. brothers and sisters. Right. She said, I want to know your name, where you're from, and where your ancestors are from. Everybody stood up, I'm white, you know, I'm such and such. I'm from Tulsa, my family's from uh, England, uh, England and Germany. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you go through, everybody knows where they're from. Mixed people, it starts, ah, my mom's from Irish and German, I don't know where my dad's from. Yeah. yeah. We get over to the brothers, nobody knows where they're from. Okay. It was the most eye-opening right. thing that I saw along with that. Let me get into some real, real. Nothing has moved me more as a black man than seeing Tamir Rice shot. When I saw Laquan McDonald take 19 bullets, I thought of my son. When I saw Terrence Crutcher be called a bad guy from a fucking helicopter, it hurt me. When, when they treat us differently, that shit offends me. Right. And it, it, I, I say this as a half white guy. Right, 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 right. I am right, a half white right, guy. Right, I love right, my mother. Right. But right, I don't right. see my mother struggling with certain things like right. this solo. That's right. I don't feel, you know, and it's, <laughs> you know, my, my, my son, he used to be nervous when we get, I got pulled over the other day. I ran a little red light, hopping more. Um, starts out, he gets upset at me. And usually I think my son would be, it would be nervous in the car with me, but he's gotten less nervous. And I think he gets less nervous because he knows I have that cop background. Right. And he knows that I know how to deal with officers. And I know those things. I, I, the stereotypes, and I go back to this, and I know you're going to say it solo, and I know you feel probably the same way. I'm done with the stereotypes. You represent families. When I see somebody shot like that unjust, I say, you think of that family. You don't need to think of him as a Black Lives Matter lawyer, as a, a civil right. You need to think of him as a family lawyer. You need to think of him as a guy who was picking a family up, whose, whose fucking dad was killed, who should still be here, who, who should still be working for that family, who, who shouldn't just get a civil lawsuit, should get criminal justice, whose number, I could go on and on, and I'm sorry, because so like, uh, no, I know there's a lot of things you can't right, say. Right. But again, I, 
this is the world we live in. This is the country we live in. You asked me before this, are things getting better? I don't think so. In certain areas, no. Um, we have to have people listen to us. We can't have people say, um, hey, man, I think my black life, well, you know, all lives. Well, of course they do, brother. Right. But when I got pulled over uh, with my mama, I wasn't as worried as when I got pulled over with my daddy. Right, exactly. You know? I, tell man, me how you feel. Man, man that's, that's some real stuff. Last night we went and watched that uh, Just Mercy movie with Brian Stevenson. It's talking about all this stuff. It was I was very emotional through the entire movie. I mean, literally crying through the movie because so many of the issues that that movie is about is things that, that I deal with, things that you're talking about. And I appreciate what you're saying. And the deal is, as a lawyer, we're taught you're not supposed to get, you're not supposed to make it personal. You're not supposed to get uh, personal with your fan, with your with your client. But you almost have but, to but, solo because they, they yeah, everybody, the media make every. Well, Tamir, well, he looked like a grown man. He's 11 years old. Right. right. And the deal about it is, I can't do my job if I don't practice that way. You know, when, when we go all in on this, this is everything. This is dealing with people are broken, as you're saying. And, and it is, it's a difficult job, and I praise God. You know, my, my deal is, my motto is, law is my ministry, justice is my passion. And for me to be able to be able to take these things on and take on some of that weight and, and time after time after time, it's not easy. And for have brothers like you and others, my brothers that are here who pray for me and support me in that work, because these families are hurting. And many times, regardless of what happened, the individual didn't deserve to be brutalized, didn't deserve to be killed, as you stated, and they deserve some justice. And we just want to be treated with respect, not tolerance, with respect. And when you respect somebody, just like we respect this Heisman Trophy, we want to make sure it's secure. We don't want it to fall off and break because we respect it. And we want the same type of respect for our human lives, regardless if they're black, because if they're mixed. You know, I have, I have now, I have nephews who are mixed. So, so it's an interesting dynamic, right? And, and so at the end of the day, we're people. At the end of the day, we want the same things in life. We want to be able to take care of our children. We want to be able to get them health care and education and live a fruitful life, a prosperous life, and be healthy. But when we have a system that's built upon the backs of the lower class, the blacks, the poor, the Latinos, and treat them as others and nothing, it makes it dangerous for all of us. Because as you said, your son, right, he's afraid. He don't know really what's going on. And he's a big kid. Yeah. He's going to get a bigger yep. kid. He yep. may get a little bit darker. So yep. now, yep. yeah, That's he got real. a white grandmother yep. and yep. white family members. But now he has to worry about what's going to happen to him because of his large side real. and his pigmentation. Real. And we, you know, we got a long way to go. But today's shows and for having you having me on makes me feel like we still have some hope. What do you think, Brad? I know there's some cases that you've seen that have caught your eye. Is there anything that you've thought of? Any questions you have for so long? That's it. Oh, I, I mean, yeah. I, I just it's it's one of those things where, you know, I, I know a lot of people that I talk to that are like, well, the um, people that grow up in these situations, they have opportunities to get out and yada yada yada. And I'm like, man. I don't know until you go work, <laughs> work in these situations, right, right. Yeah. until you deal with, you know, where you have kids who come to practice who didn't get breakfast because there is no breakfast. Yep. They don't have a parent that's yep. really caring about whether they ate breakfast, you know, just stuff like that. I, I feel like people, they don't really get just the how. Cumulative disadvantage. How, via yeah, how, how you start from behind. Yeah, cumulative you know, disadvantage. And, and, yeah. As, and as J.D. said, in my experience growing up in a quote-unquote hood, the same experience. I grew up where people, the majority, the overwhelming majority of the people are trying to go to work. They're working hard. And that's what's happening right here today. So sometimes it's not that the parent doesn't care. The parent may not have the means well, yeah, sure. to, to do care. whatever. They might not yeah. have the time. The working hardest working all the time. people in America yeah. Yeah. are the poor. Mm -hmm. The poor are the hardest working people in America. And so all this talk about um, you know, poor people just wanting to just get a check. I've lived on SSI. My mother's handicapped. She has cerebral palsy. We grew up on SSI mm -hmm. government. You're only getting $500, $600, $700 a month. Right. That is nothing to write home about. That's nothing that, oh, I'm going to live grand and large yeah. on that. It's not. Most people would like to have the dignity of work, but they want to have an opportunity to take care of themselves at a high level. And when we're in a situation where that doesn't happen, then you compound that with a legal system that's built upon literally funded by the poor people that they arrest mm -hmm. and they put into jail, we have a lot of problems that we have to deal with and be honest about. And when somebody's living in some other community, making a lot of money, they don't have to see poor people, they don't have to see black people to make these decisions. They don't know what they're talking about. Right. People like JG, JD and I, 
we know so many people that were just like us who didn't get the proper opportunity. And the deal is, it's not that we just so much better than them. We just had an opportunity and things fell our way because I just told you that there was many things that kept me from going yeah. to the schools of my choice that really literally could have had me in jail or in dead. But I had a break. Somebody made a, 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 a allowance for me. Somebody said, OK, I know your grandmother. Somebody said, we're going to give you another shot which we don't have a lot of time in today's society, maybe because I was playing football. But I shouldn't be having to, have to play football. Right, it shouldn't right. be, oh, he's a good that's football real. player. You don't right. need a Heisman to be, yeah, still, that's to be right. equal. That's right. That's right. Equal. Just, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, it's, it's almost solo. It, it's, I'm fu fucking tired of the videos. I'm tired of them. They get worse yeah. and worse. Yeah. You know? And, and it's, it's funny, and it's not funny at all, but every time the opposite side said, well, he didn't do this, a Philando Castile does that. Every, right. He didn't do this. Well, right. somebody else did that. Right. Where where are the 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 when 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 you say he doesn't do oh well, he needed a permit for well Philando had one right he asked for one and got his fucking half right. side his, I mean why when 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 you can see a video like that and and it's not even always the shooting videos right there was the one with the school re nothing pissed me off more than the school resource officer that Sammy grabs the girl, the girl man slides her ass man. across the room dude if that was my daughter. Eh. And see, what? And see, this is the thing, too, about the negative stereotype of the black man being so violent. Can you imagine if we really if we really lived up to that stereotype man. when stuff like this happened? If I did any kid on? like that solo at my school, I broke up a fight Friday. I turned the kid that way and walked him out. Big kid. He doing all this. Yeah. And I turned him around, walk him out. I ain't. Right. Throw him, you know, but, but, I, but come think, on. Think, think about if we lived up to the negative stereotype of being so ferocious, so violent, so deadly. If that was really who we were as a people and watch those videos, this this country would be in flames every day. That is not who we are. That's the character sure that they put on us. And then when you see those videos and you see that little girl being manhandled like that, or the little girl who was sitting in a little chair, and people say, oh, well, she wasn't doing what she was who supposed cares? to do. What are you talking about? Who cares if she wasn't doing what she was supposed to do? Because you're right. If that was to happen to one of my blood relatives, I don't know if I can restrain myself. Fam, we have internet. I could just send my teach my principal an email. Can you send the officer? Uh, can you send such and such? And I'm going to help right. him escort her out. You, you don't have to do that, fam. But oh, I, yeah. When, sure. And you can, I want you to comment on this. People see themselves and their family as that school resource officer or that cop. They don't see themselves as us. What do you think? Right, right. They well, can't put themselves in our position? Well, you know, I think fundamentally, uh, I, I just believe, you know, we've had the facts are, are the facts. And everything shows that the best outcomes you can get f for teaching black kids in black schools, for them to have black teachers. I'm the only teacher of color in my school. You know, who have who have a compassion, who understand, who say, oh, he's talking a little loud because that's how we talk. Oh, he may be a little unruly, but he's not going to kill me. Knows he's the culture, yet, yeah. knows the rap songs, and I think people are just, the dances. And then I think people are afraid because of the stereotypes, because of the pop, the the hip-hop music that's fed to society. I mean, think about this. Now, I'm orthodox on some of my views. No other society, no other group is allowed to say the things to denigrate, to denigrate themselves the way the music industry and pop culture does for the black folks. You don't do that for even Hispanic culture. You keep in it for, you know, our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters. You know, you can't say certain things, or you're going to be shut down immediately. Yep. But you can say these things about our yep. people and yep. our women, That's and real. it's okay. Now it's okay, but it's promoted, and everybody's making money off of it. But it negatively impacts not only our children, because they believe in that BS stereotype, but then the people on the outside who see that, they don't have real interactions with you and I. They only see interactions what they see on TV and on the video. So yeah, they fucking scared. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. No, you good. Guys, let it out. Let it out. That's why we here. That's why we here. I let all my shit out right before you got here. There's gonna be media people that hate me. But what people don't know about this guy, Brad, is he's a historian too. Mm -hmm. Tulsa race massacre. Uh, all those things. Uh, just, I'm sure you got some questions about that, but he knows everything you need well, to know about. Yeah. That. So I do a nerd podcast. We okay. talk about uh, like movies and TV show. And there was The Watchmen. Yeah. On HBO, set in Tulsa, and what I thought was amazing about that was um, there's a scene where there's a plane dropping a, yeah. a, a, a missile or bomb right. or whatever and you might think oh well this is a crazy TV show no this is what happens right. in real, real life real. Right. Yeah. You know, I tell but you, people don't realize I tell you a funny story about that crazy story about that when I get to OU and I'm in um, uh, African American Studies my intro to African American Studies class which is, it is my degree and um, the brother one of my mentors he's deceased now another deceased Dr. Kepper knew where I came. Did you know Dr. Kim? Big guy, locks, real big. If you knew, if 
If you knew him, you knew him. You don't have to do all that. Big guy. I, I, I'm trying to think because I knew a lot of the. I, I don't know that he was there. He was an A fam, big guy, like six five with locks and a. Yeah, he had a nah, Mohawk lock. I think I've seen who okay, you're talking big about, boys. but yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, he's talking about uh, Tulsa and Greenwood and all this stuff about Black Wall Street. And I raised my hand. I said, wait a minute, man. I said, no, nah, man. You, 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 you're lying. You're lying. It never happened. That, that's not how I said. I'm I said, from I'm Tulsa. From Tulsa. <laughs> I went to you Carver Middle me. School, which is <laughs> on Greenwood. This is not me? true. Right. And I got, this, I got this, this, the time. I mean, I couldn't believe the time of my life. I mean, him schooling me, the schooling of my life, schooling me about my own city of what I didn't know. So from that day forward, I dedicated my life to researching the Tulsa Race Massacre. And I was calling it a massacre then, we, the, the right. group of folks, because people call it a riot. It was never a riot. Right, yeah, you know, a riot has and, a wrong and, connotation. And I was very fortunate to be blessed to work with the reparations lawsuit and reparations litigation. And we're still working on that because we have a survivor who's 105 years old. She's the oldest known living survivor. 105 years old, and she still has never gotten anything. Her, her, her descendants has never gotten anything. And it's a shame that that can happen. We're coming up on 100 years, and people act like nothing. nothing. Uh, well, she's supposed to pick herself up. That's well, right. Well, I, I, I'm sorry you, her house is gone, but you, you, she may not have had you know, interest. Well, she can go get a job. Too bad. And she can go, Too no. bad. You know, if small things, I would love to see my university, who I have three degrees from OU, a bachelor's, master's, and a law degree. I was a professor at OU full-time for two years. I'm still an adjunct professor. I wore my old ring every single day. I've been wearing this ring for 20-plus years. I love OU. I would love to see OU say, you know what? If you are a descendant of someone whose house is burnt down, you come here for free. There it is. You come here tuition-free because that's the least we can do for you and your family for what you guys have been through in the state. What percentage, uh, your guess, what percentage of OU? Is black. Oh. Mm. 40? Four. Four? Four. Oh, God. I thought Four. 40 was kind of low, but. Four. So, do a quick, quick math, no offense. 25,000 people, 10% is 2,500, 5% is 1,250. No 1, <laughs> 1, so, 4% is under, under 1,100, probably. And that means that 10 to 20% are your athletes. Wow. <laughs> I just got what he said. No <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're running. I, you, you're a famous person. Dude, solo. There's nobody better to talk about toughness, talk about defense. What the hell's going on at OU? Are we, we're not getting elite talent. Do we need to recruit more Booker T kids? What, okay, what's going on? Okay, 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 okay. Number one, number one, we got to keep our best players in state. That's real. You cannot you, – there's no way you can have the best DB three in years in a row. In Tulsa. In Tulsa, leave the state. We have Proctor from OSU – I mean, Ohio, Owasso – Go to OSU, Ohio State University, balling up there. You get my guy Dax Hill from my Booker T. Washington High School. I mean, he's like the top recruit in, in Oklahoma last the last five years. We lose him to Michigan. And then the kid from Broken Arrow, uh, Slu or not, Slusher, Slu Slusher yeah. goes to Arkansas. I mean, so I don't care what we need to do. And I have some insight. My little cousin, my little nephew, Tricky Stokes. Yeah, no, Tricky. Broken Arrow is my nephew. That's a good one. So I'm able, I'm, I kind of know a little bit about some of the recruiting stuff, and I don't want to blast all that out. But we got to do a better job of keeping our, our, our guys here. That's number one. Number two, now, someone who grew up, my first word in life was football. Not mama, not daddy, football. I thought I was going to be an NFL player from the day I can remember. I love football. Got to fulfill my dream of playing at Booger T and OU. The only thing I didn't get to do was play for the Cowboys. But I represented a bunch of Cowboys, including Real. Felix Jones, the first round. So Real. I kind of accomplished that, too. I'm saying all that to say that today, when I look at football, as I still watch it, I personally don't know how I played. I personally don't know how I was out there to go take that punishment. And I personally don't really want my, my son or my little kid and little relatives playing. But if you're going to play football, you've got to play it with reckless abandon. Oh, your mentality. Okay? If you're going to play it, you cannot worry about what your body's going to be like. You can't worry about anything because football above all games is about exerting your will on the, other, on the next guy in front of you. Period, point blank. And I don't see enough of that on the field. I don't know why it doesn't because I'm not in the locker room with those guys. All the guys that are playing now, all of them are way more talented than I ever was. Where year were you in high school? Uh, uh, graduate? 94. 94. Okay, yeah. my brother was 92, so you probably know uh, Lynn Sexton. Uh, oh, yeah. The Damon Turner. Lynn yeah. Sexton, I call him Uncle Scooter. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people, uh, they laugh, and uh, Brad was laughing at me last time, but when you were, so that would have been your sophomore, junior yeah. year, I'm in kindergarten. Wow. Brother, I'm playing tackle the man with the football right. with four D1 guys yeah. from Carl yeah. Albert. Yeah. They hit, bah, yeah. hit, bah. I mean, we grew up playing, oh we grew up playing throw up. Yeah. I don't know if they, <laughs> you just take a piece of paper or a ball, 
throw it up. Whoever <laughs> catches it, run, and you just got it. Could be Old five school. guys, ten guys, sideline bus, yeah, all that. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the deal is, <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I don't, I don't ever, ever, ever disparage the players. These are young men. These are really kids. You know, when you in, when you 18 to 22, you don't think you're a kid, but you're a kid. And so I'm not going to d- diss kids for not making plays, whatever. And like I say, all those guys are way more talented than I ever was. But I think we need to get a little more toughness. I don't, I don't understand as far as our DBs. I think they're always in position. I don't know our ball, the ball placement, not seeing the ball is something we need to work on. I think our football IQ overall, and that really kind of goes back to some coaching things, maybe they overthinking. You know, I haven't really, like, studied football like that in such a long time, so I'm not one of these guys. Uh, as I saw you, J.D., was talking uh, with these me, I'm not one of these guys thinking, oh, I really know what's going on or whatever. I know football because I was involved in it for such a long time at a high level, but I really think we just need to get the, on the DBs, we really need to get that showing up. And then we, our D-line, we got to get some D-tackles. I mean, oh, we're yeah. just not getting uh, the guys, and I don't care about star systems and all that stuff, but the reality is we got to get the guys who can make the plays. Yep. Football is about making plays. First of all, you got to know your assignment. You got to know what everybody else is doing. And but at the end of the day, you got to make plays when you get the opportunity. And if you don't make those plays, you're going to lose the game, period. Last, last question for me. I'll let Brad if you got one, but you said it earlier. There's nobody that knows better than you. How do we make race relations better? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. That's a tough question. I think number Don one. Frank's here. I, I think number one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think number one. What's yes, up, sir. Dog? What's good? Well, hey, come on in. Crash hey, spot. Crash hey. spot. Yes, sir. What's fun, good? What's fun good? Fact. You see it. What's up? Oh, you got, oh, you got fun a fun fact? fact? Fun oh, fact. Oh, I hate hell. to represent him. Yeah. Fun oh. fact. <laughs> Hey man, don't be, don't be getting us no divorces on this show, okay? Don't be getting nobody divorced. No, don't be giving no, me no, no, shit. no, 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 no. We're working no, on a budget, no, okay? No, no. We got a budget over here, thirty dollars a show. No, no, okay? well, fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. I represent him. That's a long story. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Dominique, I don't know. Is it has it been enough time for us to talk about? Is it, <laughs> is it enough time? Is it enough time? <laughs> it's enough time. Oh, shit. Man, let me see. That's That's awesome. I, I represented Dominique when he was at OU. Okay. <laughs> and and it's, it's a crazy story with that deal. Uh, I don't know if enough time has gone past. We, it might be a statute of limitations still on there. I'm about to be quiet, man. <laughs> oh, shit. But you asked me a serious question. Sure. You asked me a serious yes, question. I, and I do want to say what's up to Dominique. You know, how we improve race relations. Number one, we have to be honest about where we are and how we got there. If you're not honest about where we are and how we got there, it can never happen. You Philando, cannot Tamir, say, Laquan should be, still be alive. Absolutely. Terrence Crutcher should still be alive. Absolutely. My client, Terrence Crutcher. I got a case right now over Bless in, his sister, Tiffany, sir. Oh, absolutely. I will. I will. She's a wonderful, wonderful young lady, and I'm so proud to represent their family. They're a great family. I tell you, man, one of the things we always say, and you hear people saying, well, we must have racial reconciliation. Well, you cannot have reconciliation if you never had conciliation. You got to go back. You got to have a step back and say, what, how do we get here, right? And once you do that, then you can actually say, how can we get from here? Like but when that. you want to just start today and say, oh, I want to start today moving forward, you're never going to have that real lasting change that we so desperately need in our country. If we don't unify and not this fake come to a football game for three hours and cheer together. That's I'm talking real. about where you care as much about the person who lives on the north side, who lives on the east side, who lives on the west side, lives on the south side, as you care about where you live, we will not be able to fulfill our potential. It's just like any team, J.D., right? Real. If the offense is doing great, defense sucks, you can't win championships. Defense doing great, offense sucks, you can't win championships. If you got a whole segment of a society who is not doing well, the society is not doing well. Look no blank. further than when a guy kneels and protests racism and gets racist comments. Anyway, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, man, I love it. I think uh, I think empathy, empathy will go a long, long way because most people are they only see where, how they're living. Like, you know, hey, I, I'm I'm going to work. I do what I'm supposed to do. I'm a good person, but they don't look into like you know how some some of the things that we we support and don't even realize it. Let me give you let me give you, a great, let, me give you a, let me give you a great example. Uh, JD was saying how he was appalled and, and just embarrassed about the lack of history, black history knew. Mm-hmm. If, if our country, if people really understood our history, it wouldn't even be a discussion about the Confederate flag. You know what I'm saying? Like in Germany, you can't have the Nazi right, flag. Right, yeah. That's what's up. It's yeah. like, we know what that was about. We know what y'all did. We know what this stands for. It's illegal, period, point blank. We should have that same type of a standard. But anytime you got people saying, well, you got to see it from the other side, what you mean the other side? They fought to enslave our people. Mm-hmm. When, my, when, when, <laughs> yeah. when half of my people are considered criminals, 
and other half of my people are considered mental illness for doing the same crime. I can't deal with it. That's right. I'm tired of seeing the assumption of criminality right. just right. because of my skin color. Right. I'm, I'm done with it, man. Right. I, I think that's a huge part right. of it. Um, sympathizing with others that look like me right. or don't look like right. me. I'm gonna say something too. I'm gonna say something else. I'm, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm a, I'm a unorthodox a little bit. You let me know if I'm going too much, talking too much. No, you good. I you think, got, you got five minutes though. You're a celebrity. Yeah. You got two minutes. <laughs> Running out of yeah, time. Yeah, I gotta here, take lawyer. my wife to the um, and my in-laws to the circus delay there show, or whatever. I call upon the coaches, Coach Riley, any coach. I want them to do more. I want them to speak out more. Real. I want them to say, you know what? I have a room full of young men that come from a certain socioeconomic background. And only three and, coaches of color. And, 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 and these are the type of policies that will help their families. Because they go into these neighborhoods and get the kids that they need to bring to the university so that so the university can prosper, the team can prosper, and they can prosper. I would like to see coaches being more step up and have more leadership to say, you know what? These type of policies... These type of laws will be good for the young men and the families that I work with every single day. I see how they live. I see the hurt. I see what's going on. I, I would challenge coaches to do that, and I think coaches. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, oh, baby. Hey, you said it was going to come back, didn't yeah. you? Jay, this is dope. You got That's us here good. in Thank the sports bar. You, like you know what I'm saying? I like this atmosphere. <laughs> this is no, good stuff, yeah. man. We're going to do it again. Yeah, We're going like to do it again. We're going to do it again. So I would definitely yes, say, I think, I think coaches could do so much to help that what you're platform. asking about. Use that platform because, you know, they're making millions of dollars, which I'm happy for. Yes. I'm not having no problem with that. I want the players to make uh, money. I was about to say The it. players need to make money. Yes. Now, we, I can't leave without talking yes, sir. about that. Yes, sir. The players need to make money. The players need to have life ins I mean, uh, health insurance for yes, lifetime. Sir. You got injuries that you had yes, at OU that's hurt. Yes, sir. Dom got injuries that he made at OU. The boy that, uh, no, I'm sorry, the boy, the Grant Calcaterra, the, the young man who just quit with concussions. Right. What does he get? Right. You know, luckily he went to the NFL and played seven years, so he get an NFL pension and all. But what about the guy from OU who tears his ACL? What about the kid from OU? Chris Brown's a great example. I don't care what he did. He put so much in for OU. He should have should never have been in that something. spot. No. Should have never been in that spot. I, I don't care what he did. You can't tell me. There should be something set up for the players, period. I, but back to your original question, race relations, I would like to see coaches step up, come out of that cocoon a little bit, and talk about these societal issues. Don't say stuff like Saban said one time, well, we're not worried about voting at this time it's all about it. don't say that goddamn it because your players their policies are impacting their families and you say you love them like brothers like they're your own sons would you do your own sons or let your right. own sons continue right. to be under the weight of these type of the policies? question i asked him solo is how could you be a coach go to sleep at night when you cut players who you told a year ago you sat right next to his mama and said mama you ain't got nothing to worry right. about right. I mean, your baby gonna be take in four years he gonna graduate right. be in the nfl right. da, da, da. and now he's back saying mama right. they told me come home and said right. i ain't got no scholarship and then you no get more. on tv and say well he just didn't want to compete but you ain't telling the backstory what's going <laughs> in right you I, it's, it's not it's funny but it's not yeah. funny it, i mean you the, know, the stuff that life. really goes on in this this is a machine this is a big business like a corporation people don't know that's why you know, the, like you said, the whole Twitter thing, and it's cool. I, I got a problem with the way our society is set up now. I'm, I'm glad everybody has an opinion, but I hate that everybody thinks their opinion, their uneducated opinion, is fact. Your uneducated opinion is not fact. Because and of 30 we, years of journalism, no. He, he's been around <laughs> journalism. What's so, <laughs> shit, I mean, what do you mean? You know, I mean, I'm saying, I ain't even talking about the journalist guy. I mean, I'm talking about just the everyday guy who's just thinking right, their opinion. Sure. It's not even just on football, but on law, on yep. medicine, on yep. everything. Oh, everybody's They're, a lawyer now, so low. Everybody's a lawyer. Everybody's a financial guru. Everybody's a, everybody's a motivational speaker. Food critic. <laughs> well, that's I'm social like, media. As long as that's the image you put out, yeah, people Personal trainer, but, speed coach. But to get like 40 times that they have. People but to get back to what we talking with these athletes, yeah. we're talking about real young people, kids' lives <laughs> who have been hurt and destroyed because of what's going on. Yeah. Period, point blank. How yes, you sir. Doing, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And I would like to see our coaches do a better job of protecting the kids that they said, I'm going to treat you like my yep. son. If You wouldn't do your son this way. Nope. And you would pay your son. Pay players. You would pay your son. That topic. You what would you pay got? your son. You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't say I'm going to get a million dollar bonus. And I can't give my player nothing else? He should be happy with a listen, bowl watch listen. and a bowl ring? I, if the school said, J.D., we're never going to pay you a dime while I was at OU, I would say, hey, cool, take care of my scholarship, bro, but I'm going to sell some signed balls, all right, bet. So when eBay came out, fam, we would have, and granted, we had A.D. and J. White. Right. I remember cats standing out with trash bags full of balls saying, hey, you, you get all these balls, you name your price, $500 a ball. Right. I'm like, what? Right. Give me ten minutes. Right. You know, I mean, right. but we can't take it. Right. 
I'm looking at five thousand dollars, ten thousand, dollars fifteen thousand, and they we get them signed for them, and we turn around two hours later, it's on eBay. It's anti-American. Seven hundred fifty dollars. It's anti-American. It's the only place where you have. It, 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 it's anti-America, but at the same time, it is America because America was built upon the backs of unpaid labor. Period, and that's the system Woo. that they have in the college Woo. athletics. Unpaid labor makes the whole thing go, and that unpaid labor is mostly. Mostly inner city black kids. Get them solo. Get I mean, them it's solo. Just it's about fifty percent D one football and basketball. And we talked about this right. with Zion. When you sign a Division one scholarship as a D one basketball or football, I would pay money for a Duke sign uh, team signed ball. No question. A North Carolina signed ball. No question. A, a Alabama signed football. No Clemson question. signed football. I would pay some good money for it. No question. You have the opportunity to one become famous, but you also have the opportunity to be fucking cut at any time. That's right. With nothing to go home to. That's right. Nothing. And Nothing. that's the bullshit part. Nothing. That's the Nothing bullshit part. Nothing but disappointment. What about your mental health? We know now so much about mental health. I ain't talking about CTE. I'm talking about your mental health. Depression. A depression. These players Addiction. need this. They need holistic services. They, they're giving to you while you have eligibility. Bingo. Because now you're part of the labor force. They want to keep on the field. But as soon as you graduate, unless you are great. Got you. Unless you are great. Gotta go. Oh, you're all you American. Are great, uh, unless you are great. We got you. And we got That hierarchy. Yeah. But oh, you're you not was, a JD, great? Hey, JD, you was just all Big 12, yeah. bro. You was just all Big <laughs> What you mean I was just all Big 12? What you mean? How many people was yeah. just all conference? It's just oh, but fact. your name's not on the wall. Fuck a name being right. on the wall. I'm saying they need to pay. We, all I'm arguing for is basic. It's a civil right. I'm a civil rights attorney. Basic le- labor rights, civil rights That's real. for athletes like we all have. Everybody That's goes real. to work. They want to be treated fairly. They want to be compensated for their labor. And don't tell me that getting a college, your college paid for is compensation. Number one, they're not really breaking any bread. It's a tuition waiver. All they're saying is that we're forgiving your tuition. There's no money changing hands. That's number one. Number two, how much, and I'm a guy with four degrees. I got four degrees. I got associate, <laughs> bachelor's, master's right. in law school. I, and I'm a, I'm a professor. But you can't tell me that this degree is worth the five hundred thousand dollars that you could probably make per player based upon the revenue that OU makes, right. University of Texas make, other schools make. Man, I'm gonna make your show. People no, gonna be good. mad at you you're on good. your show. But. No, I've said it before on Twitter. <laughs> if Zion would have sang, rapped, played the drums, played the flute, uh, done ballet, been a bartender, uh, been a bartender, he could accept money <laughs> right. and go play whatever. Do but whatever. since he's dribbling the basketball, uh, but it boils down to they don't respect the craft. But again, why are the coaches? Why aren't the coaches? Great, great point. I, 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 well, you know, it's just easier for me solo to collect this $2 million and not ruffle feathers, bruh. You know, I got a is. job and I got a it family, is. bruh. Even though they're going to pay me $20 million right. if Regardless. they fire me. It, you know, right. that's a big deal. You but, know, I ain't trying to mess so up this what shit. What I want players to say, but coach, am I your son or not? Ooh. Coach, am I your son? Ooh. Am I your or son here's, or here's not? One. Here's one. Since they're paying players now, shit, Alabama give me 50000 What you got? Yeah. Boom. Oh. Huh? Well, you got 49 9? See ya. Ain't that the American Roll way? Isn't that, Roll tide. Isn't that the American way? That's the American. It's capitalism. Listen. Why come we don't believe in capitalism when it comes to the unpaid labor of college Ooh. athletes? Free it's market. Free market. Free capitalism. Now, free now look, market. I wasn't a but JD Ronald's. I wasn't a Don Frank. So, hey, I'm not going <laughs> to. They're not going to pay me as much. No. But I'm cool no. with that. I'm cool with that. It's different. I'm cool with that. But they need to be paid. You cannot have this unpaid labor continually. So, I like to see players step up. But I call coaches to step up. J.D., I love your show. Absolutely, I love brother. what Much you're love, doing. So I hope I can be on again. Absolutely. I know they're going to probably make this the lowest rated no, show. No. Get that civil <laughs> rights attorney out Absolutely. here. Yeah. Get him yeah. out of here. So. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Solo, good. man, thank you, brother. Really Appreciate good. the sign. Appreciate picture. Hey, I have to tell your folks, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, sure. or Facebook, Attorney DeMario. Yes. My website is SolomonSimmons.com. Remember, law is my ministry. Justice is my passion. Love law it. is my ministry. Justice it. is my passion. passion. I'm going to holler at you, J.D. Love Appreciate it, you, bro. Much love, brother. Absolutely, Appreciate bro. it. Absolutely. Let's get some pictures in. Pull back you. It'll be another great episode. All right, all right. Welcome back to Full Back You. My man Don Frank's in for his second time on the pod. Blessed to have my brother in. Thank hey. you for coming, man. Hey, How you man, feeling, brother? For How you feeling? Me, man. I'm feeling good, yeah. man. I'm feeling we had uh, really your homeboy Trav Spot, Union grad. Um, I asked him first question. I put him on the spot. Battle rap. I gotta ha- I gotta compare and contrast top five battlers in the game right now. Battle rap. I mean, I I ain't even gonna lie. I'm I'm probably two years in now. Three. So if we go on battle rap, like the, the URL, I love Loaded Lux. Real deal. So I would have to say five. I'm going to go Lux number one. No order for the rest of the four. I might go uh, Hitman Holler, Verb. Verb be nice. Surf. Woo. And I like the new dude now, uh, Geechee Gotti. Geechee, I just, I just watched uh, the Geechee. 
Geechee Gotti and uh, Surf Battle, so I'm a fan yeah, now. Yeah, Verb be going hard. I like Verb. Uh, man, you got a fucking Heisman here, man. What you think, bro? <laughs> I should have seen this shit in person. Man, like I said, this is crazy. Like, when I... When I see you post it, I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. But for him to let you get this, like, this is authentic. Like, it's, it's different seeing it in person. You know, you see it on TV, but it just brings more to light when you actually get to see it, see how heavy it is and the detail work. And like you said, it's made in, in Midwest City. Like, that's huge. Where were you when Sam won it? You remember? Did y'all watch it as a team? Man, where, where Sometimes were Sometimes we? we used to watch them in the uh, – they would have, like, a team dinner on the east side of the stadium. So they would have let us go, but we'd eat real quick and try to go home and shit, so we wouldn't have to watch it. I can't. I can't even remember where we was. I think we was able to do, able to do our own thing when they did it. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Or maybe we was at uh, what's the bar downtown in um. Is it is it Louis? That right there by the uh, railroad tracks in Norman. Oh, I think oh, it was, oh, I can't oh, think oh, of the little bar. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, probably. Probably. But I think the that's Mont, maybe where we Mont, was. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um. Before we get to football, let everybody know what you're doing in life. I've, I've told everybody on the pod, listen, J.D. grew up in basketball. My brother <laughs> uh, fucking just won the Tournament of Champions, bro. We beat right, uh, Memorial big. and uh, Booker T. He's got the number one team in the state. But boys don't want that smoke with Damo on, uh, in, on the basketball court. Nah. Let us know how the hoop game is going and uh, just what you're up to. Man, it's going good. You know, just training now. I actually had to postpone my overseas trip because I had surgery a couple of months ago on my nose. So I couldn't go back because I needed to get that done. So it's just training, and then we just seeing what's gonna happen. And either like me, and you said, maybe get into coaching if the right Got person to. call, or Got to. maybe go back and just seeing wherever guys want me to go, and I just you know pursue that. Talk about some of your coaching connections. Hell, you mentioned it. I mean, bro, Mike Stoops is at Bama, BV is at Clemson. Man, to Shit. be to to be honest, to be honest, it's only really it's only two people that could call me call my phone right now, and I do it. And it's my high school coach. Coach Blankenship, he's the head coach at Owasso now. And my little brother just got a, 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 a varsity coaching gig at Union. He's coaching DBs now. So Coach B or him, call my phone. Got to go. I'll go. Got to go. But it would be nice to go out there with, with BV, but I remember how crazy BV was. Ah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't know if I can handle that. You got like, the A gap, right? Wrong. Man, it's fucking man. wrong. I was telling, I, I be telling my family, like, man, he was so amped up. Like, we haven't, we eating breakfast on game days. He amped up, and we like, hey, coach, like, we don't play until eight thirty tonight. Like, yeah, we yeah, need you, you to be able quiz? to calm Did down. Did you got your quiz? Oh, you need your quiz? Oh man. my god, man, he was, he was, he was all on it. But you know, I, I love playing for him, and I, I just hate it seeing him have to go from Oklahoma and then seeing how great of a job he's doing at Clemson. That, that hurts. But hey, I, I love the things that he's doing right now. I hate this for you, dog. I hate even bringing this shit up, okay? Because, dog, when you played defense at Oklahoma, your ass was real. When the defenses that I stepped up against, and this is why I don't even I don't like engaging with people on Twitter like that, fam. You can say whatever the fuck you want about our defense. defense the difference is they won deep right now compared to we used to be four deep. Mm -hmm. And not only that, is them motherfucking defenders will eat your ass alive day one. Play one, snap one, and inside drill. I hate even bringing it up, Don, but how did you feel seeing LSU just fucking bombing on us, dog? I mean, to me, I don't even know what the equivalent analogy is for, like, fullbacks. That's like a fullback running ISO, and we just whiff every time. And I hate to even say it like that because right. that wasn't you. That's not a state of who we are. But just talk about the game. Man, it 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 hurt my heart, you know, and it's it's just really, you know what I'm saying, like, Playing so much football that we didn't play, like, I watched the game a lot differently. Like, it's hard for me to watch it as a fan, so I'm critiquing everything. Like, I'm watching film and I'm preparing for a team that I got to play next week. And, you know, I, I really think – What's up, bro? We in, the, we in the middle of the podcast, but talk about what you want. <laughs> oh, it's not live, It's not live, fam, but you're going you're gonna to be on. Tell your name. What's your name? Joe. Joe? We got okay, Joe, Joe on the pod. It's nice to meet nice you, Joe. Nice to meet you, Joe. Joe. That's Dominique. Don uh, J.D. Reynolds, and this is a fucking Heisman right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Good to meet you, Joe. Take care, brother. Brad. Hey, y'all hey, make sure y'all come check Joe yeah, out. Yeah. You know, we at Trey's Patio. Heisman Trophy, baby. You, bar and Grill. You, you know, know he going to look out for you, man. Yeah. That's my man, Trey, talking. Yeah. My man, Joe. Jason White, uh, I was the Heisman. I don't know who they made that shit after. Uh, but. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, that shit's worth billions. Yeah, with a B. Yeah. That shit is crazy, yeah. though. Bet. Yeah, tell them what's up. Nah, we good, fam. That burger yeah, was good amazing. For right now. You just keep I'm going to order some when we get done. Yeah. Oh, so shit, okay, yeah, we, I'm gonna come that? holler at you. Nah, we, we Joe, right? Not on the menu. Okay, yeah, dog. I'm gonna come holler that's at you. How we Joe. do this? Full back, you baby. Hey, that's that's what it is. So yeah, man. so back to uh, one of our safe. Unfortunately, and that's the other thing is, unfortunately, it was just really one of our safeties that was having trouble in the game. Mm -hmm. um, is that a sign of Oklahoma talent, uh, Dom? Here's the other thing: we've lost DBs. The, our our top DBs have continually come out of Tulsa, mm -hmm. and we lose them. Mm -hmm. What was it like seeing Oklahoma DBs out there not doing well? And then how do we get the Tulsa guys? Uh, to to start off first with our 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 defense, you know I think the main thing is you know what I'm saying we have the talent, but the biggest thing that what we have to do is we gotta have we gotta have an identity on defense. We don't have a, we don't have an identity on defense. So as a corner, I should be able to go into a DB meeting room in Norman and ask Trey Brown, Motley, Norwood, you know. What coverage do you think you're best at? You know, I'm watching it. You know, I don't, I don't know if we can really answer that question because we play so many different coverages. So if you play so many different coverages, it's hard for you to get great at one or two, at one or two things. Yeah. So if you look at uh, when I played in the NFL, Seattle had the number one defense. Well, a lot of people don't know that Seattle only ran cover three, press cover three. Yep. So Bail they, those corners so, as soon as y'all so go. So they perfected. The press cover three, and that's what made their defense so good. So I feel like once we simplify everything, because we're going to get the talent because we're the University of Oklahoma, but we just got to find an identity on defense. And just like Alabama, Clemson, you see those guys. Take Ohio State, for instance. The Bosa brothers leave. One Bosa brother leave. The next Bosa brothers come up. He's the best DN. Now, you get, now he leaves. Chase Young is the best DN in football. It's who you go recruit because yeah. you have an identity, so you go get the same kids every year. And I really think that's just our biggest thing. Like I said, we're going to get talent, but it's just having that identity. And I was even talking to somebody, like, when was the last time we had a 6'4 receiver? Malcolm yeah, Kelly CD was the last one. He's about to ride at 6'3". That's – Last that's time we had a 6'1 corner. That's 05. And not that we need one, but, I mean, I'm sure it would be nice while you are in the boundary to have a guy just to go – Yeah. It goes guard to that guy and while that's, you're younger. And that's how – and that's how – and that's how – what made me and B-Jack so compatible because he was a 6'1", 6'2", 215, 220 corner. You put him in, in the boundary, let him press, put me in the field. You know, we could do different things. So we had an identity to our defense. So I, I really think that's the biggest thing is just, just having an identity from our coaches and being able to figure that out and go get the right kids to plug and play. Talk about some football X's and O's. You're a very, very smart player. You talked about certain things. Tell me what coverages you were getting. What, what things did you look for on the football field? What things did you study? Let me know what made you a complete player. Mm, I, I would have to – I would really have to say, you know, I liked – I like to play a lot of zone because I like to look at the quarterback. And, you know, it, it, it really helped me playing at the University of Oklahoma, playing in the field because we played everybody that wanted to throw the ball 50 times a game. So I was able to read two and three receivers at, at one time. You know, it's just – you know, playing football, you kind of – as a DB, we already on our heels because we don't know what the offense is going to do. So every little thing that we can pick up on, try to do it. So I started watching film and see, okay, when, a, when maybe Michael Crabtree lines up, maybe he pulls on his gloves a couple of times when he's supposed to get the ball. Okay, maybe Desmond Briscoe, when he line up, he plays with his towel when it's a run. Listen you, to this. You know, Listen. it's just. That's that shit, Dom. <laughs> it's just, that's that shit. It's just a lot of stuff, you know, you got to try to you got to try to pick up on and try to get the upper hand cuz I don't know what you're going to do as a defender. But if I if I can hurry up and analyze if it's run or pass, that's going to be a lot easier for me to be able to do my job. I, I used the example earlier, you know, one of the one of my most painful blitzes was BV would call pirate and cat at the same damn time into the boundary. Mm -hmm. And we I'm looking at this linebacker and I'm coming knock the linebacker straight out at burger that shit looks good, don't yeah. it? I'm coming to knock him. Put it on my tab. I got him. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm looking straight at the linebacker. Phew, tailback, or, you know, cornerback comes yep. and tackles the tailback five yards deep. Yep. You know, 
So now I have to realize the alignment. Is it a tight three and five? Because mm -hmm. they're going to come inside. Yep. Linebacker on his toes, he's going to come up. Is the corner looking at me? Because he's probably going to peek in and see where he's going. I mean, there's and, and smart corners ain't going to look in because they don't want the receiver right. saying, hot, 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 right. hot. Right. Uh, they don't want the tackle saying, and, you know, they want to get you off guard. There's just certain, and that's one play, Dom. That's one play. Yep. That's one play. It's, it's, it's crazy seeing, uh, you know, having to face Tom Brady, Drew Brees, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, I remember my first time playing against playing against those guys. We break in the huddle. Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Tom Brady looking at me and like, okay, Nichols blissing. Another bliss is coming from the Mike linebacker. And I'm like, we haven't even lined up yet. But it just it's just their yep. minds. They're so used to seeing everything. And they 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 trying to get as much information as they can to put their offense in the right play. It's, Let's talk about NFL guys. I mean, you mentioned smarts. For me, fucking Brian Urlacher will run my flat route before I knew it. Why'd okay. you go? I mean, damn, but you ran too wide. Okay. You got to fake your power a little bit more. I'm like, well, shit. I mean, he's 30 years old, and I'm 21 at yeah. the time. Um, Patrick Kearney, guys, that was uh, – you guys, uh, you play with Curtis, a uh, smart football player. Uh, just uh, y'all had some corners out there besides yourself. Uh, DBs that were really, really good. Talk about some smart players that you knew out there. Of course, Curtis. We had Brent Grimes. You know, Brent Grimes was – safety. Corner. Corner. Real real small corner, probably like 5'9", 185, 190, but probably was the best corner that I ever seen play, like just athletically and didn't smart. Didn't give him a lot of credit because he was light-skinned. And, 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 and he was small. Yeah. But when you say you got to learn the tricks, he was so small that he couldn't, he couldn't rely on his size against Calvin Johnson being 6'4", 6'5". So how can I outsmart him and be able to use my jumping ability without touching him? So he would probably have to be one. And, man, when I tell you, like, when I went to Baltimore, Ray Ray. Like, the, like the game planning for Baltimore was crazy. Like the whole defensive coaching staff. Like I remember when we played Atlanta, they, we had a running back in Atlanta. His name was uh, Anton Smith. So we sitting, in, we sitting in the meeting rooms. We about to play him. The defensive coordinator stands up, and he say, hey, whenever, whenever number 36 in the game, whenever he scans the field, scans the backers, the line of scrimmage, that's going to tell you if it's run or pass. So if he start off on the left and he scan right, it's a pass. If he start off right and he scan left, it's a run. It's a run. That's what's up. So Terrell Suggs and him is standing up looking at him, and now they're turning around, and now they're telling me pass. They're telling me it's a run. So now I'm already knowing what to, what to look out for and seeing, like, when they look at the tackles, how many hands he got in the ground, if he's on his knuckles, if he's, if he's on his fingertips. Like, it's just – it was just so crazy going to Baltimore and just seeing the way that they took game planning to a whole nother level. Yeah, absolutely. So it made me be like, man, I want to I be able to do the same thing and be able to understand what's going on before it actually happens. Top coaches, you mentioned that. Uh, some of the brightest minds you're around college, and then you could hit the, the pro ones, man. I'm really, really interested to hear some of the pro ones you have. Man, pro ones, it would, it would, it would, have, to be, it would have to be hardball. You Ooh. know, I played, with, I played at Baltimore also with Dean Pease. Uh, Steve Spagnola, good one. Um, Mike Nolan, I think he just got the head. Uh, he just got yep. the DC job at uh, not San the Fran, Cowboys. That was Cowboys, yeah, the Cowboys. He was at San Fran when I was there. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, you know, when I was in Atlanta, you know, I played with Malarkey. We had Van Gorder as a D coordinator. He was, he was, he, he was tough, man. He was, he was more built for college, not really NFL. Uh, who else? That I can say. My, now, now I'll probably say the best coach, and this is probably going to blow your mind. His name was Keith Armstrong. He was my special teams coach in Atlanta. When I tell you his mind was just so different, how he broke down film and what we should look for and, huh. and how, do, how, you cover, how do you cover a kick and you do all of this. Like, it was just, it was just crazy seeing how his mind worked. But he was definitely one. Dave Tobe, I'm watching right now, Kansas City special teams coach has had Devin Hester, Tyreek Hill. I mean, uh, you know, but when we were there, we had three pro bowlers uh, just on special teams. Okay. And you talk about just the minor details. Hey, what, what's different about this play than the others? Hey, a fake's coming. How do I know this? Hey, this is happening. This is a fake punt. Something is different about these looks. Yep. What is it? Something's different. Where is it at? Who's over there that's not? Okay. I'm giving you the last, last chance. Man. Okay. The kicker's coming to watch the, the play because he knows it's a punt. Or a fake punt. That's a, that's a, you know that's what I'm a saying? Fact. I mean, you just like, what? I yeah. mean, the what? And it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. The, the attention to detail when yeah. you get to the professional level is just like, yo, like there's no way you love your family. 
at like all. Like y'all got y'all y'all too y'all too much y'all have too much invested That's in this. It. Like I understand this, pay your bills, but That's it's like. It. Yo, you telling me that I now on third down I need to look to see if the punter is watching the play because that's gonna tell me Word. if it's a Word. fake or if not. It's like a that's crazy. Like, right. I'm supposed to be paying attention to what's going on on third down to yeah. just even ensure that we get the fourth down. I'm a uh, I'm intrigued in the league, and this will lead me to coming back in college. But best route runners you saw in the league? Give me a three or four or five, maybe. Best route runner. Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. Okay, have to go, Larry Fitzgerald. Woo. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you one person that people people really don't give respect to, because when he was in Carolina, all he ran was slants, digs, and fades, and that was Steve Smith. Man, when I tell you when I when we first got to Baltimore and the the different stuff that he was doing, that he was selling a go route and he would come back and run a dig, or he'd show you a dig and he'd run an out route. So I would have to say Steve Smith, Larry Fitzgerald, Roddy White was a really great route runner. And he really helped Julio a lot, so I gotta throw Julio in that. Man, I tell you, I tell you, another guy that really surprised me was Antonio Brown. His route running, like he was just so he was just so quick. Doesn't change in levels out. exactly. Just, it's in, uh, a dig looks like a stop, looks like an out, looks like a co- corner. He was, a he, post. Was, he was he was so smooth, and it was like I tried to pick up on certain stuff, but I just couldn't do it because everything looked the same because of his size. Julio, you can say, okay, I know when he's gonna break down because he gotta come down Too a little big. bit to slow down. But A B was just in and out, in and out of everything. It was just like, damn it, I ain't gonna be able to yeah. jump any routes. So let me ask you this, because I asked you that to take you back to high school. Let's start from the basics. Where'd you learn to cover, Dom? Was it basketball? Was it just was it just football? Was it when you stepped up to be one of the state's top DBs, was it a fact of I'm just taking any fucking receiver I can and just dominating them and, and doing that? And then in the college mentality, just talk to me about the growth of you as a DB. Really, I, I really, I really wanted to say because I didn't start playing. I didn't start playing defensive back till my junior year when I moved to Union. And the crazy thing is, is I started as a freshman and a sophomore at Owasso at tailback. And when I moved to Union, Coach Blankenship wanted me to play running back, but I'm like, I don't want to play running back no more. So he was like, what position? So corner. But it really, to me, it came from coming from playing basketball. You know, I was, I was, I was thought of as a, as a young kid, as a great defender that, you know, I had to guard the, the Michael Conleys, the O.J. Mayos, the Derrick Roses. And it's like, yo, like if I got to move my feet, I can't touch them. Now when I come to football, now when I'm impressed, now I can actually use my hands. So that helped me a lot when I was in – High school, as far as press technique, because my feet were already good, I can move laterally real well, being able to put hands on. But it was just more, you know, my coaches, my coach Spavital, my defensive coordinator, Coach Blankenship, Love, man. just really allowing me to be myself. You know, they, they looked at me and said, hey, you just do what you're comfortable with and you go out there and play to the best of your abilities. So I never really had to focus on – Technique. I was just able to go out there and have fun, and you know, even even yourself. Like the more that you can have fun with playing, you play better. But once I have to start, okay, how do my feet gotta go? Like, is my feet wide enough? Is are my hands up? Like, oh, what what down is it? What you know, what routes and everything? And it was just like just go out there and play, and then once I got good at it, now I can break it down. Okay, third is short. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking for slants. First down, I might look for curls and goals. Now the film work come in after I got my feet wet and I was able to play my whole junior year without really being corrected. Now I can go in there because I played it. I'm good. Now I can go back and look at film, and now I can start jumping all of these routes. When you when you talked about, okay, first down, they're, they're curl and go, talk about the learning curve of that. Was it just, fuck, I'm just getting roasted on this one, or was it this is the knowledge that I need here? When you started stopping those things, was it all knowledge? Was it physicality? Just let me know that. Uh, you know, you know what was crazy. Like I never really, I never really, it it, it was it was weird. Like it, like a lot of my stuff in high school was so such God given ability that like really my senior year it just it was like a light switch went off or went on and it was just like okay this is what's coming and I didn't really know but it was like damn that's happening so let me jump it and it was really like probably like halfway I was like hey if I start watching film. I'm getting wide splits, so they got to run back inside. If I get tight splits, they got to come back outside. Down the distance is going to tell me how deep the ball is going to go. And another thing what I learned when I was in my end, towards my end of, co- end of high school going into college, I started reading what a quarterback, what a quarterback, when he gets the ball, where's the ball? 
If it's by his ear, he's ready to throw it in three steps. If he's going back and it's by his waist and he's rocking, yeah, and it's off. a deeper it's yeah. a deeper route. Yeah. So now that's telling me like, oh, if or the ball lower, is trying to hand the, it off. If yeah. the ball is here, now my feet need to stop. Now I get my eyes on the receiver. If the ball is rocking, now up. I get back to my receiver, but I'm speeding up my pedal because it's a deeper route. That's real. So little stuff like that really start helping me out where the receiver splits are. Reading two, one got to be coming back in. So if I'm in man-to-man, I'm reading two, and he go to the flat. I know it's a curl coming, so I'm jumping your curl. So it's just a lot of different stuff that I start really seeing, and then that really helped me to become a better cover corner as I progressed in my years. Couldn't imagine having a, if how much it has to slow down for you to read the damn ball between how a quarterback's taking it or handing it off. A lot of experience. Um, talk about when do you – and I, I'm leading this all up to where we've gotten at DB right now. Mm-hmm. Talk about when you got your first pick, uh, how excited you were with that. Um, when, did it, when did picks become regular to you? Uh, just let me know when you started to really, really what – was, what was the most comfortable feeling you had at OU? So my first pick at OU? Yep. It was against uh, – oh, we was at home. It was uh, – we was playing against Cincinnati. Okay. We was in red, too. So, which is which is really like a cover two, but it's in a, it's in a, it's in a tighter – basically, it's a cover two in the red zone. Okay. Uh, one runs like a like a shallow win. So, I know, well, one, when one sit down and he goes in, two is coming and he's running the corner. So, I baited the quarterback – and I play like I was going to run with number one in. So he just lobs the ball in the back of the <laughs> So I catch it. Yeah, so I think beautiful. I think me and Keenan end up running into each yeah. other. When I jumped, he clipped my leg. I fell. So that was my that was my first pick in college. Um, just really, I never really, it, it was never really a regular feeling to me to get picks in college because they, they were so scarce. Like people didn't really throw at me too much. So it was like, hey, I might, I got one Cincinnati, but I might went like, five or six games until my next one because I think maybe my second pick was after the Cincinnati game was maybe Nebraska when I picked off the the bubble screen right, the first right. play of the first game play. so it was it never it never really came natural but I always tried to study like hey like I gotta be ready when that opportunity comes and I was actually telling my brother um Clemson was playing against Ohio State and they dropped the they had the they had the three safeties they had the uh, three safeties lined up like a picket fence. And Isaiah Simmons was playing the middle. No, Big Isaiah middle. Simmons was, yeah, he was in the middle. And the two white safeties was was playing like on the hashes. Well, on a snap of the ball, they blitzed the linebackers, and they let the two safeties drop down, and they played the hook. Threw it right to the white dude, but he missed it. Oh, yeah, I remember that play. It was like, it was the, first, it was like the first six. quarter. Yeah. So I was telling my brother, like, they, they practiced that play. He was like, what you mean, bro? And I was like, bro, when we played against Nebraska, we ran a bubble screen to the Saint coverage, and I picked it off every time. And BB said, that's going to happen in the game, so make sure you don't drop that motherfucker right, and you right. go score. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, there's no way that shit is going to happen sure in the game. Did. The very first play, he called Saint. They line up in three by one, and I say, they bet not throw this ball. As soon as the ball is hiked, I just take off full speed, catch it, and, it was, and I was telling him, I was like, they practiced that play. Like, it's, it's crazy to say that, but he knew what was coming, what coverage, what personnel, what down and distance, what roster they was going to run. And he yeah. put you in the best situation. BV's so good, not only would he coach you guys up, the motherfucker would coach y'all up and then go steal the other team's signals. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I, I don't know how many times he said, JD, slam dogs, slam dogs. I'm like, right. what the fuck? The, I, that ain't the look. And sure <laughs> enough, that damn safety. Oh, shit. Thank you, BV. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm like, right. damn. I right. sure would have got JY fucking killed. If hey, it wasn't for BV. BV. BV was totally different. It was, it was so many times where I think you posted the picture where he was playing scout team quarterback. <laughs> when I tell you, when I tell you, when I tell you we wanted to hit his ass so bad yeah. when he was at quarterback. Dog. The thing I loved was his eyes was looking straight down. He ain't giving you no eye contact. Oh, yeah, nah, none no, at nothing. All. Yeah, none at all. None at all. Step read. None He's at not all. gonna give you any eyes. If anything, you need to look at his shoulders and turn the way he turns. Man, okay. that I BV mean, BV was a like, different dog. animal. He's too much. But uh, you mentioned something. I want to talk to you. You know, Keenan Clayton, uh, not a more athletic defender. Mm-hmm. I mean, damn, it was there any position he couldn't play. Yeah. Love that dude. Texas defenders, Oklahoma defenders. Talk about some of your Oklahoma defenders. Is Oklahoma defense where it needs to be in high schools? Um, and then are Texas defenders elite enough, or do are we just trying to move people around that whole deal? Uh, as far as, like, high school-wise? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I, f- I feel like we have we have a lot of talent in Oklahoma. And, you know, you're starting to see now that a lot of guys are starting to go out of state. 
yeah. and become very productive, yeah. not staying at home. So, you know, we have the talent, but it's just will our big program as in Oklahoma take a chance to go get more Oklahoma guys? So, like, as me growing up, as you growing up, when we was in high school, it was a big deal to get that Oklahoma offer. Like, you didn't see another – you weren't thinking about going anywhere else if you got that Oklahoma offer. But now, since so many kids are not getting the same love that what we got, they like, shit, well, I might as well leave. So now when you see more people leave, now it's opening up all the kids to be like, well, shit, why wouldn't I go to Alabama? Why wouldn't I go to Ohio State? Why wouldn't I go to Michigan? When I was coming up, that wasn't even a, a thought. thought. It's like, shit, I'm going to the University of Oklahoma. Like, so – Where's that Tulsa disconnect, though? Where did, where did that disconnect come from? That's what everybody wants to know. Why? Because, again, this is, this is Owasso. It's mm-hmm. Booker T. It's, it's uh, Broken Arrow. Man, it's I just, can understand. I'm sorry. Owasso and Booker I can understand Owasso. And, or, excuse me. I can understand losing cats from Booker T. I cannot understand losing cats from Owasso. And, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's, it's more the focal point that you don't, we don't have Oklahoma – the coaches from Oklahoma, a lot of them are not from Oklahoma. Right. So it's hard to tell a head coach, as in like Lincoln Riley, how special Oklahoma kids are because we yep. have nobody that's higher up in our coaching office that vouch for Oklahoma kids. So while we're looking at how many stars a kid got, where he plays high school football, well, he has to be better than a guy from Oklahoma, even though the Oklahoma guy might be better. Well, the Texas guy, the Texas guy got more stars. So, I mean, it goes. Talk to him, dog. I mean, it Talk goes. To him, it goes to this. Hey, I'll be, oh, hey, I'll be frustrated because, because I'm looking at the kid, the kid Hill from Booker T that went to Michigan, the Proctor kid that went to Ohio State. Like, those are two guys that can help us. Yes, sir. Do you know? And it's just, it's just like we're letting a lot of Oklahoma kids leave. Like we let the kid leave from Tulsa McLean. Probably Josh, went to the worst school that we could have in the state of Oklahoma, and, and he fucking goes to Alabama. Took it out on us. So it's to the it's it's to the point. Like when are we gonna finally have an identity? Go get kids that match our system instead of just always looking for stars and and rankings and things like that. Do you think? And you're a guy you wanted to play early, did play early. Does it affect those kids to see? One, does it affect them to see us down? Two, does it affect them to see them starting right away? And then three, does it affect them to see that they probably aren't starting with guys like at Ohio State or Clemson or things like that? Are we just at such a disadvantage where we can't even get our own Tulsa kids? That's what I'm trying to ask. Or is there something we can do to just say, hey, let's, let's, let's put three or four coaches in Oklahoma now. Let's put one coach in Oklahoma City, one in Tulsa, one in Lawton, one has everywhere else. But we got to make a more concerted effort to get around those kids more. Is that I, what it is? I mean, I mean, my thing right now, like, Oklahoma is a great program, but your defense haven't been very good in the past couple of years. So I feel like that's an easy selling point because because all kids want to play early. So it's hard to tell a kid like, hey, you can start as a true freshman and you, your ass is going to fucking go play in the final four. Right. So who wouldn't want to do that? But I don't I don't really think we're really going going hard after the Oklahoma kids like we really should because there's a lot of kids that's leaving the state like. I would be at their school every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. We got a – everybody just went crazy. A Jinx product, Darwin uh, – what's his name? Darwin Thompson. Darwin Thompson. Uh, he was at uh, Utah State. I uh-huh. believe he went any other than Utah yep. State. Just got him a carry. So. And I actually, and I actually uh, trained with him. Like, right okay. when he was coming out of high school, we was doing some speed work with my guy Marcus Pugh over there at Jinx okay. High School. Okay. And it was – I was actually able to see him grow and see where he's at now. Like, that's a – that's a that's a big deal and not really worrying about what school you're going to and things like that. It's just getting out there and just doing what you need to yeah. do and be able to better yourself. Were you with D. Will, any? Darren? Yeah. The running back? Yeah. Talk about a fucking NFL career. What yeah. a, I mean, damn. That's 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 crazy. And, and no offense to him. I loved his game in, in uh college. He just he seemed like more of a speed guy. He didn't seem like he's had just the overpowering type. Mm-hmm. But the dude has taken the shit. To a fucking different level. <laughs> I mean, damn, he's a, and you, he's explosive. And 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 when you start getting around, when you starting to get get to that professional level, and you can even speak on it. Like there you go, right now. When, when that shit start becoming your job, and that's how you that's how you feed your family, and you see that first game check or anything, and you like, well, shit, I don't want to do nothing at else all, at all. So now I need to start buying in, and you know, 
he was able, probably able to learn from some good backs in the NFL and just see how the way they work. Because that's the biggest thing when you get to the NFL or any professional sport is just learning how to, to channel all of that free time and how to work and things like that. A couple more things, man. I'll let you go. I know you're busy, man. But transfer portal. Fuck, if it was the Titanic, if it was any other school, I'd say the ship is sinking, fam. Hey, when I tell you, so my little brother, I was talking to my little brother Howard and my guy Antonio. Like, I didn't know, like, it was a whole new recruiting process. Like, I thought maybe when you when you hit the transfer portal, I thought maybe you, you call schools and, like, hey, I want to transfer. So, see, I didn't know anything about it. So, that's, that, like, that's, that's brand new to me. And that's, that's crazy. Like, that's going to hurt a lot of kids because – it's an easy way out. Like, we didn't have that. So we had to, and I don't, don't want to sound like that guy, but it's just like we had to fight whatever yeah. we got. Like, yeah. it, wasn't, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a thought for us to be like, oh, well, my mom not playing. I'm going to go transfer. Your mama going to be like, well, shit, you better go lift extra. You better go run more. You better go study more. Like, you fucking got to find a way to get on that field because transferring and just up and quitting is not the yep. way that you were raised. So it's just so different to be able to see kids be able to move freely like that and just, hey, I'm not playing here. Let me go transfer. Yeah, yeah well. You brought up a great point. You had to quit. Unless you were a quarterback with us, you were, and if you was a quarterback, your ass was going D1, AA, or D2. Hey, you and, and the ahead. crazy thing, did you, <laughs> did you play with Brett Bowers? Yeah. So I guess they got in trouble in the Orange Bowl, Yeah. and Brett wanted to transfer, and Coach me. Stoops was like, huh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> your ass is still be here tomorrow. I'm not releasing you. You have, right. you have to release this paper, right. and I'm not so, going to sign it So for all you. of this, all of this, like, oh, I'm going to just yeah. transfer? <laughs> Brett's ass was trying to leave and had to see Coach Stoops every day because Coach Stoops was like, yes. no, nah, it's okay. Yeah. You'll overcome it. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck you mean I'm overcoming? I won't incriminate you, Brett, on what happened, but <laughs> I will say it happened to a lot of us. So uh, she was worth it. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, where do we go from here? You know, the, the transfer portal, we need bigger, faster, stronger guys. We've lost 20 guys or losing them. Where do we go from here, Dom? I mean, we need to, we need to regroup. We need to get some elite talent. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of the elite talents going to the SEC, Clemson, that whole deal. Mm -hmm. Shit, or do we really want to go back to the playoffs and play anybody but the, uh, the Ohio State, Clemson, and LSU or Bama? Do we really want to go back and play them? What do you think? I mean, like like I said earlier, like as long if we can if we can get an identity, like we have an identity on offense, it'll help us to be able to go get the kids to match up with those Ohio States, Florida's SEC schools, Ohio State schools like that, Clemson. Because right now, the way that we're setting up our team, we're setting it up to win the Big 12. But we're going to kick everybody's ass in the Big 12 anyway. Like, I don't know. This is like five straight. Like, that's not important to us anymore. Like, we expect to be in a Big 12 championship. So right now, we need to be putting the teams together to prepare for the Clemsons, the Ohio States. And now they're starting to run the same offenses that we run. So when you go get those Isaiah Simmons kids, that's 6'4", 230, that plays – Everything. Wide receiver in high school, but you move him to linebacker, and it was like, wait, if I put him at safety, now he can cover and do everything like that. I mean, it's just it's just different intangibles that you could do. So it starts off with the identity, and that's really what we need. And once we do that, then we can go get the kids that's man-to-man -man corners, zone corners. We go get linebackers that 6'4", K9s. Now we can have three of those because we have an identity to our defense and not – well, we'll just take this one because we're lucky to get him, and we hope that he can make everybody else better. But it's like, no, we got to start going out there recruiting all of those top guys like you do those three receivers that we brought in that was Absolutely. all ranked in the top ten. Totally different there. I'll end it with this. Give me five DBs. I'm assuming if you put out a defense, you want to put five DBs out there. Okay. Give me your all-time OU, your, your five DBs you would put out there. Five? You got to put yourself out there. No, I'm not going to put myself no, out no, there. No, no, no. I'm putting you out there. So, so, so I'm, I'm gonna, putting you out there. So, so do I do corners or I'm, well, I'm going to put, you, I'm gonna put you at boundary. I'm, I'm going to keep you at boundary. So that position uh, it's four others. Okay, so four others. So, ooh, that's – You got to give me a nickel, two safeties, and another corner. You want me to tell you mine why you think? Okay, no, okay. I got it. I'm just, okay, I'm just, okay. I'm just lining okay. it up. Okay, okay. If I, if, if I'm in there, from what you say, yes, you no, 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 no. I'm no, not you, gonna put you myself. You are in there. I'm not gonna put you myself in there. It's my podcast. So, so, so I'm gonna give you <laughs> Darren Williams a score. Okay, D. Will. Yes, sir. There you go. Yes, okay, sir. so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you my five, my five. I'm gonna give you two corners, a nickel, and two safeties. Man, so Trey has got some beautiful women in here. Yeah. 
I'm loving this place. I got to start coming back. <laughs> I got to start coming back. Sorry. Sorry. Train right of now. thought. Uh, okay. Fucking five DBs. We, so, need, we need protection. So five DBs, my, my field corner. Yeah. Yeah. My field corner would be Reggie Smith. Oof. I'm biased. I got I got to go my roll dog, B-Jack. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, you know what? No, scratch that. You can move my field, uh, inside. My field. My field. Now, I got one for you. My field, I'm going D straight. Ooh. My boundary, I'm going B-Jack. My nickel, I'm going Aaron Colvin. Mm. My safeties, I'm going Reggie. Reggie Smith. My next safety, I would say. That's a hell of a nickel with Tony Jefferson. I love I love it. What defense would you run? Why? Man, with those with those animals, I'll probably run <laughs> I I'll probably run some cover one. I'll run some um some zone schemes that when your receiver gets past 10 yards, 15 yards, we locking it up to man to man. Man, with those guys, they're so smart, I'll be able to run a lot of trap coverages. Whew to really disguise a lot of things like that. Man, with that with that group, I would really be able to run anything because I got smart guys. I got athletic guys. So it's not the coaching. It's the players you got? Oh, it's the players. Oh, well, it wouldn't be coaching that. at all. Imagine that. It would be players. Imagine you just go that. out there and ball. Do your thing. Imagine that. You heard it from the man, Don Frank. Anything else you want to add, man? Let everybody know uh, what you're up to these days. Uh, are you are you around? You need any pro up training? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm around. I'm in Oklahoma City. I'm Basketball in Basketball training, song. personal training, football, what they know, what just, they need. Just whatever they need. Send them to the kids. I'm here. How they get a hold of you, Twitter? Man, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram is dfranks24. And, you know, I want to I wanna, I wanna get with anybody who really want to work. That want but that we real also, work. But we also got to get that film work in. Absolutely. You know, I think, I think as far as Oklahoma kids, that's where we're lacking. Yes, sir. We have, the, we have the physical ability. We just don't have the smarts yet because nobody's telling them that that's mm-hmm. what they need. So I yes, think sir. that's – that's really the focal point. So all the guys that's out there training, which are training, like try to get that class work in too, because that's 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 very important to starting in seventh and eighth grade math, please. There you go. Yeah, yeah, starting. I need it, bro. <laughs> shit. Okay, they, I, I don't even assign homework, fam. Just do your fucking work and stop talking. Man, that's, that's it. That's all I need. Okay. That's it. Hey, I just want to give one one shout out to my brother, Howard Scarborough. You know he he back home coaching at Union. For sure. Safety safety's yes, coach now. Yes, so. Sir. I can right. say it, but he can't say it. If you got any DBs, send them. There's only go one place. Go ahead and transfer to Union. There's only one place. Little brother Howard Scarborough is going to get you right. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. He's going to get you right. State champions State. next year? I mean, we can throw it out there. We'll throw oh, it. Okay. We'll, I mean, we'll throw it out there. We're okay. we going to see. But I, but I know what. I, I'm going to be able to say that Howard's going to have the best safety group. In the state of Oklahoma. That's real. I'm excited. So if anybody, single mothers, married, yeah. whatever, yeah. you got kids and you want to go to the next level, D1, send them to Union, they would be in good hands. Yeah, if you single, single, just hit me up, shit. Yeah, uh, but yeah anyway, he's married, so uh, he's off limits, but yeah. <laughs> big brother's free. But Nah, man. Hey, Don, appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Thank you, shit, sir. We got to do shit again. Yeah, we Brad definitely. Brad Reed's going to freak it again, man. Uh, hook you all up with some uh, highlights. I'm going to go ahead and take this bad boy. I don't know if I want to get this shit back to Jay or not. Yeah, you might have to keep I mean, that. Be like, man, I think somebody man. took it. Yeah, I don't know what happened, fam. Yeah, we was at trades, and I think somebody <laughs> walked out with it. I'm not sure. I went to the bathroom, so I'm not it's sure. It's in Tulsa somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can find it if you need to. Long, long, yeah. <laughs> he going to come to your house and be yeah. like, whoa, J.D., what happened? Yeah. You, you, you put it above the fireplace, huh? 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 What? No, nah, I got this one made. This yeah, one, this one yeah. made. I just called the company. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I made a rep for this. Is, this is for you. Yeah, this is shit, for you. Yeah. But already, man. Shit, D. Franks, appreciate you, bro. Brad, I know you're going to kill this, man. It's Thanks been for another great. Me. Trav, thank you so much. Trey's Bar and Grill has been amazing. Y'all come check us out. Get a burger. It's going to be another great episode of Fullback You. <laughs> <laughs>